All right, welcome to the Seibei cast number 164 with CBET RS. CBET, how are we doing this fine afternoon? Uh, I would say I would be perfect, but I didn't get as much sleep as I intended, but it's just enough to converse. Well, yeah, no, enough, I, I suppose. So but, that's uh it's not too bad. Yeah, I I I like I said I I potted some caffeine right beforehand, so uh, we're we're looking oh, for I'm a, it right now. Yeah, we're looking for a very late, uh, or I guess I should say early morning until I actually fall asleep. The worst thing ever is, is like, kind of be. Well, the thing is, for those listening, I mean, Seabat, you live what in Australia, right? Yep. Uh, I, I I literally can get I so I get so confused with New Zealand and Australia. It's just like I, they're the same for me. It's so bad. Are you gonna ask if I ride kangaroos to yeah. school and yeah. stuff like that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And apparently, like you guys have kangaroos as pets, and you also eat kangaroos. Like, what the what's going on there? I mean, I am mostly a vegetarian. I would say, like, I'm 98 percent vegetarian. So I'm not the. I mean, I have eaten kangaroos in my childhood. Let's not take that part away. I have definitely. Are they, tasted, is it I don't good? know if you've tasted can- never. It never. actually it actually is really good. I had a uh, bodybuilding friend who used to we call them kanga bangers over here. A lot of the bodybuilders eat these sausages um, called kanga bangers. Are they pretty and, uh, lean or pretty fatty like sausages? It's it's really chewy meat. It's like okay, kind of so- like I don't know how to really describe it, but it's ridiculously tough to chew. Oh, it's, it's definitely really, like really super tough. lean then, right? It's just got to not have that much fat. Yeah, and uh, I think it's one of the healthiest meats for you. I'd say, yeah, it's real good. I mean, it's got to be guy, he- it's got to be healthy because, like, isn't it like kind of like a wild animal? So, like, those things are just fucking like, just they're like, I don't, I don't know how to describe <laughs> it. It's like eating something super wild. It's like you're getting so many nutrients from like you just. I guess because they have they're taking in more things, right? They're taking yeah. in more variety. So you're taking in what they're taking in. So then yeah. surely you would get more total vitamins. I don't know. Is that how it works? Surely, I don't know. Right? I mean, it's better than eating like a pig. It's just living in its own shit. Like, surely, right? Like, just... Yeah, surely. I mean, I But guess. anyway, this yeah. friend, he got... I swear he got food poisoning multiple times or something. But this is what he used to do. So, he was a bodybuilder. And every time before his workout, he would get these kanga bangers, put them in his microwave, put the microwave on for 30 seconds, and then just eat them. Like, he didn't even cook the sausages on the stove. Like, he would just microwave the kangaroo <laughs> sausages. <laughs> And eat him. And yeah, he got yeah. like, he got sick so many times for it. And he still just kept doing it. It's like, what are you doing? Oh, wait, like it's like raw meat? It's like raw and then you just microwave yeah, it? Yeah, I swear it wasn't even cooked properly. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's not, that's got to be like actually dangerous to eat. Because yeah. That's yeah. not just like eating like, like a, a pig or a chicken or like a <laughs> cow. It's like, no, that's like a, isn't it like, I think I heard that somewhere that like if you eat like if you were to eat like predator meat like a bear or like a lion just eat that like if like it the raw meat of it like if you if it's not fully fully fucking cooked that shit has like parasites all over it all over oh, the yeah. raw meat like you get you'll die from it basically have you seen the videos of them like getting raw flesh from different animals and like putting it under a microscope it's pretty like oh god i don't no. know if you've seen that before no never i don't know if it's genuine i don't know if they just like edit out and like make it seem more like i don't know more fear inducing that it's actually meant to be but it, it looks pretty it, yeah i don't know if that's their intention they're doing it well so yeah <laughs> i i gotta watch that probably i mean i have no desire to really just eat a like raw bear <laughs> You probably watch Bear Grylls, right? Surely you're a fan of Bear Grylls growing up. Yeah, I mean, I watch yeah, it here and there. It's probably well. way more popular where you are. But uh, yeah, it was definitely it was definitely still popular in America. Yeah, him just eating random like deer hearts or whatever on the side of the track, or just what pissing in a snake skin and then drinking his. You've probably seen that too. So, so he was the guy that would like actually just record by himself. But the the problem is, I I remember watching I, at least some episodes of his series, whatever series they were called bear grills versus the wild or whatever um yeah and it seemed like there was a bunch of helicopter shots and like just random panoramas and stuff but but then it would be him with his like camcorder and tripod like setting up and setting up camp and stuff so like what were there always people he could just reach out to or was this kind of more of a solo endeavor and then occasionally a helicopter crew comes in like what that's the what's going on that's why I feel like it's not as genuine as it really is. Like, it's not actually a man versing wild. Like, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think they not. interviewed him and they said, like, he would set up camp and it looks like the most trashy camp. Like, he would not want to sleep there the night. Like, mm-hmm. snakes and stuff on the floor and stuff. 
And then he just goes, gets flown home to like a luxury hotel and just stays the night and then comes back and just films himself waking up again the next one. I mean, I mean, you might as well. Like, Dude, like, yeah. <laughs> you, you've, you've seen those like um, YouTube videos where there's like these two people just building a mud hut out of yeah, just like yeah. the fucking like the little the, yeah, yeah. the little creek and they're just like picking up mud and then you actually see like behind the scenes and there's like cranes and everything like fucking like <laughs> yeah, i've not seen the behind the scenes for that but i can imagine no and like they, they were it was like exposed like some of these were like super extravagant like people were building like fucking just huge pools yeah. and just like temples out of just like it's just like you see a screenshot or like you see like a like a clip and it's just like a flat dirt. I mean, this this shit is like sand. I mean, it's like uh, not sand. What am I saying? It's like it, it's like it's like ground. I mean, it's just like the, the, the ground, and they have these little shovels, and it's like really, you're just gonna just dig fucking twelve feet into the ground, <laughs> like just with a shovel, like. And then you, yeah, apparently some of them got exposed. Like the really extravagant ones got exposed as like okay, there's there's a literal like machine here that's just digging in and it just would it yeah. would like clear out every time they made a new clip and yeah i guess uh what well, we had the egyptians build the pyramids so it's not too far-fetched although with the technology we have i don't feel like you would put yourself through that much uh strenuous effort if you don't have to so dude it makes sense i i, I really want to go to the pyramids one day like that is something i've heard you need to like be there to really take it all in. Like you just, you actually need to be to go there. You can't just get it from drone shots and just watching videos of it. Like you got to be there to witness like how yeah. grandiose this shit really is. Like it's insanity. Apparently, that's um, somewhere that I actually haven't been. Like I was really lucky growing up. I had parents that were like mega addicted to travel, so I've been to like let's say. I've been to New Zealand probably seven or eight times. Fiji probably like five times. I've been all through America in an RV. I've been really Holy Thailand, shit. Malaysia, Mexico. I've been almost like most places. I haven't. The only place I haven't been is anywhere in Europe, which is kind of strange. But yeah, I was pretty fortunate with that. I mean, I haven't seen the pyramids yet, but I don't know. Extremely lucky there for sure. Yeah, my parents were boring as hell. I mean, we. I, I don't even think. <laughs> I, I literally so like. I'm trying to think if we ever even went on a camping trip, <laughs> like just camping. Oh, we did that once as a family, like just just as a family. Like we we would do like little vacation. Like we would have like family friends where we would go like to a different state briefly and like rent out a house and just kind of like stay there a few nights and we'd do things like that. But it was never. We just wouldn't do much that was adventurous. I don't know. Oh. Uh nothing beats a good camping trip i reckon just around the fire just telling your horror stories when you're like 12 13 years old around your friends is all just freaking out over i don't know you have the torch under your chin trying to look more scary oh I yeah no, did I, that kind of no stuff. I, I did a lot of that because um like in my church where i grew up in like we we were like forced to do boy scouts which was yeah. fun as hell because we just had a bunch of kids my age and so we would go to like these scout camps we would do these like they were called high adventure trips and we'd go like rafting and shit. So I, I definitely got a lot of experiences, but it wasn't ever like family uh, oriented. It was just like just with the youth kind of group. And so, uh, no, but straight up f the fire stories, like you're just sitting by the, the campfire telling <laughs> just whatever the hell and just being degenerates. I mean, we, <laughs> we would do, I sent a kid, yeah. to, I sent a kid to a hospital because, um, this was, I think I was, uh, I think I was 14 or 15. I must have been, no, no, no. I, yeah, I think I was 14. So there, we went on like this one week camp out trip. It was like a Boy Scout camp. And yeah. we went there and our, our troop was just the fucking worst. Like we were the, we were just the worst troop because we didn't actually want to be scouts. We were just forced into it because of our church. And so yeah. everyone else there is like super serious about their merit badges and like getting these things done and like t just really taking the whole scouting thing seriously. And we were just there because we were kind of forced to, you know, just like one summer. And yeah. so, and we had like, you know, 20, 20 kids in our troop and we're just like – we were just obnoxious. We were, we were so such <laughs> trolls. Like we would literally like bully the other kids because like we would see them and they're taking it seriously and you, just, you know, and not like actually bullying, like like uh, harassing them, but just behind their backs and stuff. And we went. So there was this one trip where we were on the Oregon coast, and our leaders were so chill that year 
that they pretty much just like let us do whatever we want. So there was like four of us that went down to the beach, which you weren't really allowed to go out there and sleep out overnight. You're supposed to stay in your little like campsite. Oh, is this a skinny dipping story? No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, well, I, I will say just this is like a side tangent. One of the things I fucking miss about that is being able to look up into the night sky because when you're on the Oregon coast, like you're in the yeah. middle of nowhere. I mean, you're just looking up and you see the whole, just all the stars. And I, God, I miss that, man. That's the, that's the best thing about camping, just being able to see the stars at night. But, um, no, so like we went down there and the sun was setting and, uh, you know how, like if you spray an aerosol can into like a, a fire, like you, you don't oh, want the yeah. flame to like go into the can or else it'll explode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's so, like if you're farting onto it as well. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen people fart and like light the can <laughs> with a match or whatever. It's like, you don't want to. You know how you, people like don't suck back? Are you gonna suck the flame up your butt? I don't know. Yeah, gonna... yeah, yeah. I've, <laughs> yeah. I've heard. It. I, I don't know if anybody ever did that. We, uh, like, well, we definitely try to fart on fires. I don't know if I ever like saw any reaction to it. But um, oh, no, it was so messed up to watch. It's like a balloon. It's like <laughs> you like see like a balloon <laughs> fire. It's so messed up. The sound is just oh, it just sounds like it's gonna stink like way worse than normal. I swear. <laughs> Anyway, there, you there, continue. There, what there, was, there, was this, there was this kid that was like, he was like not even 13 yet. He was just young. I was 14. We just had like some other kids. I think it was like four or five of us down there on the beach. And we started a fire down there. You yeah. Know, just like this is like fire. super rebellious for you, right? Uh, not like super rebellious. I don't know if there was any real rules on like lighting a fire like up the beach. But like we were safe about it. Like we knew how to start a fire. We knew how to like contain it and stuff. So it wasn't it wasn't like a big fucking bonfire or anything. We were just making a little fire. And uh, we had like our little sleeping bags out there because we were just going to sleep out overnight. And we told our leaders we were going to go down there. They didn't give a fuck. But like every but like the there was a bunch of other leaders because this was like a huge scouting event. That would have told us, like, hell no, you're not going out there and sleeping overnight. But they just yeah. didn't care. So we went out there, and I sprayed into the fire with this aerosol can. And I saw the flame shoot up into the can. <laughs> and I just freaked, like, the, just a moment of realization. I just chucked it. I just, I literally just chucked it, like, you know, I don't know, 50 feet up in the air. Just launched it. And I was like, heads up, heads up. And yep. this this 12-year-old, like the youngest guy that went down with us, he's just a little pipsqueak. I mean, just tiny. And he's running straight for where the can is headed, like on its downward, <laughs> like, you know, descension. And it just like nails him right on the head, like literally <laughs> just hits him. And he falls to the ground. And we all run over to him like, oh, my God, like what the hell did I do? And uh, we run over <laughs> and he, he, he good, like he, you know, sits up. And we're like, are you okay? And then we see blood coming out of his head. Oh my god! Um, that and and we're like, 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 dude, you're bleeding. And he's like, what? And he looks, he he taps his head, sees the blood, and passes out. So he passed out fucking twice. And so oh we we have to pick this kid up and like run him back up to camp because we were just scared. Like we didn't know what we like. I thought I like killed this kid basically. Yeah. I, was, I was terrified. To a DR again. Yeah, and so he like, well. he was literally rushed to the like the hospital apparently. Like it would just it was awful. And then uh, th this was a friend of so he was a. He, he had a brother that was my age and we were really good friends and I'd hang over at his house like, you know, and his mom hated me after this because it was known obviously that I was the one that like sent him to the hospital and stuff. And uh, he was totally fine, by the way, but like just, yeah, just to be sure. His fault. But his mom yeah. hated me after that. Oh, my God. Why bad. didn't he just not run in its projectile right? I know. It's God, come it's on. It's not my fault, right? No, it's, it's, it was bad. It was just unfortunate. But yeah, that's that's the story. Yeah, that reminds me of when I was on a, a cruise ship and I got, you know, whenever there's like a comedy act and like you get called up out of the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a guy and he was like juggling some bowling pins or something, I don't think. And he, and he called me up and he's like, okay, throw this and I'll catch it and keep juggling. But you oh, have to God. time it on three. And he goes, one, two, and I threw it on two instead of three. <laughs> and the bowling pin hit him in the head. Oh, God. And like, I swear he like almost fell over. <laughs> Oh, he was fine though. The whole crowd is just pissing himself laughing. And I just, I remember just becoming famous on that cruise ship because they're like, you're the guy who hit him in the head with the pin and stuff. Oh, that's and awesome. Every time, everyone would want like photos with me because I hit the guy in the head with a bullet. <laughs> Bro, that is awesome. Just, that just that's, reminds me of that so much. That, that's the kind of shit I would pull as a kid. Just like on three. Okay, I'll just do it on two. Like just, <laughs> just for the, for the lulls, you know? Yeah. yeah. We're just the ultimate trolls, I feel like. 
I was su- I was such a troll in high school. Like I, I was I was like that class clown that was just so annoying. So was like, so was I. <laughs> I. I was so annoying. Well, the thing is, I wasn't. I would be quiet in classes where I didn't have like a friend where we we would just. It was like a. It was like sort of like a duo. Like we had to get like the dynamic duo going. Where if I had a friend that was equally obnoxious as I am, we would just create inside jokes, and we became yep. just rambunctious animals. I mean, just out of control and I'm, I'm talking like all the way up to my junior year i actually moved high schools uh my senior year so i just like didn't have any friends there but up until junior year oh my god i was just so annoying in some classes but then i'd have like the other classes where i'm actually like respectful because i just didn't have anybody to like feed off of yeah how was, how was that no i was very similar and i got a funny story about that as well so when i was in high school our group kind of like so there was like a alley that's kind of like a alleyway i wouldn't call it an alleyway like a I don't know, just a straight path to the office. And there was like seats on either side of it. Where, mm-hmm. Like the teachers would like walk through to the office and our group was like kind of sitting on those seats on the side. So like the teachers would be forced to walk through into the office. Mm, yeah. And um, at lunchtime, I'm just eating a carrot and I have like the, the top bit of a carrot left. Probably, let's say it's probably a centimeter by yeah. a centimeter um, dimensions of carrot. <laughs> this teacher, well, I, I say to my friends, okay, I'm going to try to throw this little chunk of carrot at the teacher's back oh, and God. see if she notices <laughs> so i throw it it skims her jacket like slightly and she's like who threw that and then she looks at me and i'm like she's like did you throw that and i'm like no nah, it fell from the roof and she's like no i know you threw that and then my fr- i see my friend behind me just fall to the ground pissing himself laughing <laughs> she's like come to me with the office and then oh, i go to the no. office and she's like that's assault you're suspended and stuff i'm like you're joking right it skimmed your jacket and she's like no nah, that's assault and I'm like, what? And then I actually got suspended. And then my mum made me do laps of a swimming pool the next day as punishment. And then she bought me chocolate carrot eggs for um, Easter the next year Aww. to like make fun of me yeah, yeah. for getting suspended for throwing a carrot. See so, that that that's the that way that fun. that is a great that that is great motherly love right there. Where she's not like yeah. you you already got your punishment, <laughs> and she knows that you're not actually like a bad kid. But yeah, yeah. That, see, see, I would never like I, I, I had a little bit more brain development, I would say, than you had at that age where like I'm not going to be throwing shit at people and stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was a one off though. Let's be fair. It's yeah, yeah no, no, that's, that's fair. And you probably just had absolutely. I mean, just the fact that like you had no idea like this, this could have severe consequences. Like, yeah. you know, as soon as it happens once. Cause, I mean, I got suspended in second grade. Oh I, really? Yeah, I, I brought I, was... a, I, I brought a pocket knife to school for show and tell. Oh, what? Oh, okay. I, I did it for show and tell. Like it was not. It, it, like I was like the most. Just, I was not a violent kid. I was just a fucking like innocent child, you know, <laughs> super yeah. innocent. And I just thought, oh, I'll just like I got a pocket knife for Christmas, so let me just show this off for show and tell. And I pull it out, and this. And in fact, I didn't even show it for show and tell because I was in my backpack and I showed a kid and I was like, hey, look, I'm going to show this for show and tell. And he just instantly told the teacher and I got suspended. <laughs> I was like, you son of a bitch. Like, I hate you. Um, but yeah, I just like a little thing. Yeah, that was the that was, that was, yeah, it, was, nah. it was in school suspension. So I just sat in the office for a day. I feel like I wasn't as rebellious as I was in high school when I was in prim- like I was in primary school. I was kind of a bit more nerdy and stuff like i got like accelerated in math from like year one to year three and stuff mm. and i was like let's say you know addy's obsession with moss that was kind of like yeah. me but with like rocks instead like i knew like every mineral and every rock wow. okay. in existence and i would like bring in that was my show and tell like i'll bring like random rocks and dinosaurs. oh you were that guy yeah, yeah, yeah we, i would have yeah. i would have bullied you no i'm kidding <laughs> that was, no that's that's actually cool i, I never had like super yeah it's interests. weird like I am not your typical nerd, though, because I'm, like, I was, like, a nerd that was also sporty at the same time. So, Mm. like, I also got nominated for sports captain in primary school as well. It's, like, how does the nerdy kid get nominated for sports? But I was the worst sports captain. I was meant to be, like, with... There was always, like, a boy sports captain and a girl sports captain. And Mm. you had to, like, be in, like, the sport area blowing up the basketballs and stuff at lunchtime. And I'd never show up. And she's, like, why aren't you showing up to, like blow up the balls and like i was like super competitive with like handball i don't know if you played like handball competitively at the top handball? Totally that was... was that like dodgeball 
Like what is that? No, it was like just with a tennis ball. How you like whack it over the line? There's like a full. There's like uh, you you like um, you call it when you is that like get it real low and slam it. Oh, maybe it's not a thing is, in America. I'm not sure. Uh, no, no, it probably probably is. I just I don't think I, I'm I'm unfamiliar with it. Yeah, I'd always skip our sessions to play handball, but then handball once you got into high school was seen as like something super uncool, so you couldn't play handball anymore. Damn. But yeah, dude, we we had this uh, like in middle school. We this this is great. This is just fucking throwbacks. We'll we'll eventually get to some RuneScape topics. I promise for those listening. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> this is fun. But, but in middle school, um, we started. I, I me with like a couple other kids. We we started getting really into Foursquare. But it wasn't traditional Foursquare. It was so. Oh, oh know, this is wait. So this is handball then. Foursquare is that where you got like kings, jacks, duns, and stuff like that? No, no, no. It's a, it's a, it's just a, a square. It's like four squares on the ground that's like drawn in chalk or just paint. You know? Yeah. So you got four yep. squares. And in then, the tennis ball? No, no, no. You we would use. I mean, you would use normally like a wall ball, like some sort of like just rubbery ball, um, like oh, a big one. But, but but we we would normally use a basketball because it actually had. Just a little bit more grip and a little bit just more control. Too easy though, I feel like. No, no, no. So, so what we do? I mean, this was it was a small court. Like these are sm- four really small squares. But we we kind of changed up the rules. So if anybody's like familiar with four square, like what we would do is we created these rules where like you you would you're you're only able to hit underhand, and it you know it has to hit into the next person's square once, and then you know you only get one bounce, and the other person has to hit it into any square of his choosing but what we would do is we made this rule and i'm not going to go through the whole list of rules but one of the rules was you could launch it at somebody if you wanted to and if it hit them before it hit you know out of bounds or in their square they're still out they're still out because they even if it was clearly going out of bounds because it hit them first there's no there's no evidence you know there's no there's no (laughs) definitive proof that it wouldn't have hit inside of their square so we just that became a rule where it became like this that makes it a lot funner oh it was it became so much fun like bro but it would make it mega toxic as well oh it was so toxic dude we would play we would play it, it, it literally became because like what happens is you have like the square number one that's the guy that's like the king of the court you know he's been there and so like if he got out then everyone one would rotate and then there would be a new king of the court and then a new person would roll in yeah this is like 80 90 percent similar to handball so okay. i guess this is your version of yeah, yeah. so yeah. so we i mean it was literally like i would stay king of the court or i'd have my buddy as king of the court and we'd have three of us just dominating the court and we would just like we would literally <laughs> we would say set me up like set me up so we just like literally like the, the first and you bounce was, it to them and then you just oh it the lightest the... the lightest like toss like the most blissful little setup and then you just fucking launch oh, it at the person and... that would piss me off whenever i saw someone like go for a setup like that i'll just run up and like just kick Bro. it into them and then they'd be like you're out and then everyone would be like hack it hack it i'll be like i'm not hacking it you Bro. know <laughs> Do you remember everyone would like be like hack it i don't know if they said that to you no we would say well, we would just say like launch it or something i don't i, don't, I can't remember what we said but oh, but when someone like okay let's say when it's like yeah you, someone doesn't know for sure that they definitely got out or like they did but they don't want to admit that they got out or like uh-huh. they don't want to like oh yeah 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 that happened oh, all the time no argue it yeah <laughs> like, what do you, what we would you argue for 15 like, minutes at lunch yeah, yeah. <laughs> i would get so pissed at people for that it was bro. ridiculous bro. i think that's what that's the most angry i've ever been in life is bro. when like i know that i'm in the right and they're like hack it like, yep. shut up. no we we the, the most fun was when we'd have three of us and we'd get a person. We, you, there was always a few kids that would take the shit like deadly serious, and they wanted they wanted revenge on us so bad. And because I was more of like um, just kind of in the kind of cool kids sort of group, you know, just it, I was just yeah. a, a little bit more popular than these other kids that were just like permanently angry. Um, <laughs> It was just it was just fun. It was just all trolls, and I I never took myself seriously either. So it's just like whatever. But these guys would just be deadly serious about it. Like they wanted to get king of the court so fucking bad. You know, we're all just like a bunch of twelve and thirteen year olds. And yeah. I mean, we I would just tell people to set me up. Like this kid would enter the court after waiting in line for ten minutes. He'd finally get in, and I we've just been taking advantage of just, everybody. And and I would just like so set, I, I would just tell somebody to set me up, and I would just launch it at him every time. And I just remember having, like, the biggest argument. Like, this kid was, like, threatening to just, like, <laughs> literally murder me. I'm just, like, straight yeah. up. Like, I mean, like, that would be so me, too. Pissed. And I was I just, get, like, amazing. Event. Oh, and I, I was just so calm and, like, relaxed and stuff. And, like, he was, like, I'm going to get you out next time. Like, I'm going to, like, somehow. And so he 
He like I just remember one day in particular, like somebody set me up and he literally just shoved me to the ground before I could even hit it. Like so, he was still out Wait. because he just fucking assaulted me. Um, oh, what? So I just <laughs> ran off and just like yeah, yeah, just just straight up like just launched me to the ground. He was so pissed, just a total cheap shot. But to be fair, we were all like a bunch of assholes. Um, yeah, but yeah, I he how... we, we we got him in trouble after that. It was pretty awesome. So he was he never played again. Yeah. Yeah, sure. We, we were a bunch well, of there. We go. We gremlins, discovered dude. that we kind of we kind of did have a similar. That is basically handball, okay. and you could see how addictive it. Oh, so it is. addictive! I don't know. So addicting. Yeah. I don't know, dude. We even made <sighs> T-shirts on it. Like we we became so obsessed with this shit. Like in seventh grade, uh, we we made like our own T-shirts on like this Foursquare League, and just for oh, for the God. lulls for the lulls of it. It was so popular. It was cool. Did it become mega uncool for you once you got to high school? Like was that like oh super nobody played cool it? Yeah, yeah nobody play? played it. Because yeah. the thing is, like middle school lunch was it was like it was kind of like a recess. Like you just eat your lunch fast enough and you can go outside for the next twenty five minutes. Um, with high school, it's just like you just have lunch and you just sit your ass down. Like everyone just becomes like lazy in high yeah. school. It's like you just don't. You, you're not gonna go play outside. Everyone's sweaty. Like nobody wants to smell a fucking basically grown like <laughs> that's grown actually co- that's kind of true yeah yeah it just becomes more about just sitting down chilling chatting yeah so, yeah for sure yeah um when you mentioned that this guy came and assaulted you yeah. i don't think i which what's crazy for me is i never in like primary school or high school got into a fist fight not a single time which is kind of crazy like i'd never ever got into a fight even to this day i've never been in a fight which is i don't get how like I've had a few close calls, but I've never actually. Have you? I don't, no, I know, I've, I've never. I mean, I've never it. been in like a legitimate fight. I've definitely like wrestled, and yeah. you know, just kind of gotten into like almost like we like consented for it. Like we were just like both like, all right, let's let's fucking wrestle, you know, because we're just rowdy. Um, and like I would, I had a friend that was super. He just got super into like wrestling randomly, and so he'd come over and we'd hang out and we'd wrestle and stuff and. Um, like we did that kind of stuff, but like a legitimate fight, like, no, I never got in like an actual fist fight. And I knew, like, I knew my own limitations. I was not going to be trying to get involved in some shit like that. Like hell nah. Yeah. I, um, I had probably maybe two people in probably high school that I like super didn't get along with at all. Mm. And I remember this is the closest I ever got to a fight was, um, I had some, I had some guy, I broke my leg at the time. Mm Mm-hmm. And he already hated me before, but he took the chance when I had like a massive cast on my leg to just come up and hit me. Like when I was on like a gym, a gym bike or whatever and like school sport. And then I remember even with like the broken leg, I remember I just grabbed him by the neck and just held him against the wall and he just freaked out and he just never picked on me again after that. Damn. Cause like I was, I was doing like gymnastics and stuff in high school. So I was like probably one of the bigger kids, I would say. That's mm-hmm. why he probably took his chance when I was injured i feel like but that's probably as close as it got but yeah i don't know yeah there was there was a (laughs) there was i think i was like 12 or 13 i really wanted to get into karate i just had this sort of like phase where i just maybe i saw some karate movies or something i was like oh like that'd be fucking dope getting a taekwondo getting some karate and uh i just never really did it because it's just i don't know it's just like it's just, again, it's like my, like me asking my parents, it would be like, I'd come, like, I'd go ask my dad. I think I'd probably ask him a couple of times, like if I could get involved. He's like, yeah, like, sure, go for it. And then it's like, I'm a kid. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So it's just, he, he wanted like me to be the one that like really just kind of like took control. And, you know, like, I, I feel like my dad was kind of like that parent. Like he wanted me to like do what it took to get involved in that. Instead of me just showing a minor amount of interest and then him being like, okay, like, let's get you involved right now. Like, I'll do anything to help you out. It's just, yeah, it's kind of like he was just lazy as well. And so he's just like, yeah, like you, if, if you keep pushing, I'll eventually, you know, like we'll do something, but I wasn't pushy enough and it just never ended up. You happening. never started. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunate. I, I only started jujitsu recently and then I've, you've seen on stream, I've broken my finger pretty much straight away after starting. Oh, it. that sucks. It was really funny. I was at a party and like a family friend, I was like arm wrestling him and then mm-hmm. I beat him in an arm wrestle and he's a jujitsu guy. So he's like, I'll show him. I'm going to 
get him on the ground in jiu-jitsu and he just completely just destroyed me <laughs> jiu-jitsu and i was just like oh shit like i've never felt so vulnerable i was like i need to start this like i can't i can't be that guy who loses <laughs> i don't know yeah and then i start and i bloody break my finger instantly like what is this see that that's like um i've actually been kind of interested in uh joining a jiu-jitsu sort of like gym <clears throat> and just getting involved in that because like i know for a fact i'm just gonna absolutely just look so pathetic on a mat with people um that actually know oh, what yeah. they're doing but and you learn you, with the first few times yeah and, you, like, and apparently you learn like relatively quickly at least the basics so you can like kind of hold your own against another beginner like you know if i was just to go against somebody else like I, i'm you know oh yeah feel confident but th that is my biggest worry is literally just the injuries because like right now i have like a really nice sustainable sort of fitness routine where everything's like yeah. at home or just outside on the, at the park or just like out on the trail and i i haven't experienced an injury in years like i'm just completely healthy i don't have any problems but like one of the fears with jujitsu is like literally you go to a get on the mat with somebody and some guy like fucking tweaks your arm or something or tw just tweaks your yeah. leg and it's like god damn it now i can't like do anything for the next like four weeks six weeks like i that sounds awful like that's just yeah it sucks for me especially like this is only my pinky so you wouldn't think that it would affect your gameplay that much but you can mm -hmm. imagine if you have like this cast thing just this massive bulky thing yeah. on your pinky and you try to like move your mouse too fast to the, like the right or whatever mm -hmm. it's kind of like blocks you a bit it's it's more annoying. It's more like invasive than you would initially think. I feel like I don't know. It's now that sounds that sounds pretty yeah. invasive. That doesn't sound. But I feel anymore. like yeah, jujitsu is probably one of the martial arts that probably has. I don't know. I don't know if it has the least injuries, but it has probably the least serious injuries. Maybe you just get finger stuff, which is kind of bad for us because we play RuneScape with mm -hmm. most of our life. So that's kind of yeah. I don't know. So, no, it, it does sound relatively safe and um, like you're not going to get injured much if you're just, you know, not going too hard. It sounds like it's just the, it's just the yeah, potential. Yeah, I just got unlucky. Because, yeah, like it's yeah. just it's literally just the potential and like everything I do now is has such low risk for injury. And I just like yeah. that. I like just being healthy, waking up every morning and just can do whatever I want with my body. I wonder if anyone's ever broken a bone playing RuneScape. <laughs> Do you reckon that's happened? Do you reckon like you've just, I don't know, just... I mean, like, people have gotten carpal tunnel. You know Sekon. That guy got fucking developed carpal tunnel from... I don't know if that's breaking a bone, but it's just fucking up your wrist so bad. There's a oh, lot of people like, that have suffered. Three tick granite, tunnel. surely. Yeah, no, he he was on his skilling arc, and uh, he I think it was like three ticking chins or something. He got carpal tunnel severely. He had to go to like... He had to get like a cast for it. He had to go to the like physical therapy. It was bad. And he still yeah. suffers with it. He's it's not as bad anymore. I mean, even Autumnology, you know him. Like he's yep. he's been dealing with uh, his own wrist problems. That for, makes sense. For he like did a year, two hundred mil on granite, didn't he? Yeah, but it wasn't from that. I think it was just. <laughs> I mean, it was from RuneScape. He he claims um, just because of how much like tick manipulation he was doing on his free to play uh, ultimate. But yep. um, I mean, yeah, he did two hundred mil at the quarry. Like, with... what is free to play ultimate? Who does that? <laughs> That's the, oh, the that. people that do it. It's like okay, so obviously there's a spectrum <laughs> of autism of like. We, I mean, I, 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 I have I'm on it for sure. I have literally, I, I have literally wanted the confirmation. I like, I take those online tests. I've taken them several yeah. times, and I'm like, just fucking, just tell me I'm autistic, so I can just like, you know, say. When I'm, I take like, I'm those good. tests, it's like 70, 80 percent in favor. I'm like, <laughs> really? <laughs> so, so you like? Yeah. It, so it says you are because for me, it never says I am. There's, there's too many elements. And even when I'm reading the question, I'm like, okay, I, I can know what the answer is going to be to, like, be autistic, and I'm just not this. Like, it's just clear. I, I'm not going to lie to myself. Um, yeah. But there's, throughout, there's like, definitely some part of me that it just, like, the fact that I can play this game, I've, I've put in, like, 20,000 hours on this account right now. Like, dude, that's not oh, yeah. normal. The fact that you joined a skilling clan and that you enjoy skilling, that says it alone, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally the, the fact that i would literally I just play this game and then like just try to stream it to not do anything else like i just want to play this game more because that was my intention i wanted to stream because i wanted to play runescape it was not the uh, you know i want to stream so badly well let's find a game to play let's just straight up i was so addicted to runescape i was like how can i play more runescape <laughs> how can i find an avenue to just play more runescape and make some money that's kind of that was actually kind of me as well 
to be honest, like during COVID and stuff. I feel mm-hmm. like that's, I mean, I, I, I haven't really made any serious profit of streaming or anything, but I feel like, I don't know, that's, I wish that I could. I, like, I don't know. I wish so much that I could. I wish that, but now at this stage of my, like, I'm getting old now and I'm thinking, like, what am I doing with myself? Like, why am I, why do I, I'm sure you, I don't know if you have these oh, thoughts yeah. too. Oh, like, yeah. why am I, you're in bed at night, you're just thinking to yourself, like, why, why am I playing this? Like, and then, and then I feel like, do you get days when, like, you just stare at the login screen and you're just like, I don't know. And you like yeah. you log in for like maybe a minute and then you'll just bank stay and you'll be like, I yeah, can't just be look at the bank anything. and you're like, I have no interest in doing anything right now. I'm just, it's just yeah, like but, the, and habit then the whole of time. In. Yeah. You're just at the bank, like complimenting your, like your life. You're like, why did I waste this many years playing this game and stuff? It's like, why have I done this to myself? I can't get these years back now. It's like, it's... for, for me, it, what's interesting is like, I've actually, <clears throat> I never really get those thoughts where like I've wasted like, I, I'll definitely get thought. It's never, like, really RuneScape. It's more like just my overall life. I'll think back, and I'm like, man. Because, like, you know, I'll go on Instagram, and I'll see, like, old friends, and they just fucking have, like, two kids, and just, like... Yeah. Look, looks like they're just living... Uh, it looks like their life's perfect, in a sense. <clears throat> but that's what uh, social media wants to project onto you, that everyone's life's perfect. Exactly. Like, they're only giving you the best parts of it, right? Yeah, and that's all I would do, too. I mean, I've fucking posted, like, <laughs> yeah. one time in, like, the last seven years on my Instagram. It's just, like, my trip to Vegas. And it's just it's all these happy pictures of me, like, partying. Like, yeah, like, this is awesome. <laughs> but it's, like, that was, like, once in a... <laughs> once, once every several years. Like, yeah, great. yeah. So... The rest of the time, we're just miserable, just looking, <laughs> bank standing, thinking about what we could have accomplished if we didn't waste five ten years playing i'm like i'm like very much like i think to myself and i don't want to get like terribly philosophical but it's like we didn't choose in a way like who we were like what our environment was how we grew up and everything so like again i'm not going to go into like this whole like kind of like deterministic sort of view but the way i see stuff is like i've like the, the the way my life has panned out has taught me a lot and it's like given me a lot of lessons and i've If I didn't have all these experiences, if I didn't, you know, quote unquote, waste, you know, years of my life playing a game where I could have been doing something else, like my life just wouldn't be the same. And I wouldn't have learned some lessons about, you know, like valuing certain things. And so I never really deeply regret any of the things I've done. It's just I see the the like the aftermath, like almost like the the consequence of having done something. And so. You know, yeah. there'll be days where I'm like, I, I'm just contemplating. I'm like, I'm not like, ha- I'm not as happy as I wish I was. And like, this yeah. is another philosophical thing I could get into as well, where it's like, you can actually just be happy with pretty much anything that's going on. But again, I'm not going to get all into that. But it's like, I, I want to achieve some things in my life at this point. And like, I don't know how old you are. How old are you? 28. Yeah, I'm 28 as well. Oh, I'm tra- I'm we're getting to- old. I'm, are you thinking actively, like in bed at night, like, oh shit, like you're counting down the days to your thirty? I don't know if you're. I'm mm. kind of like that. Oh, I don't want to be thirty. I actually, like, I, I start. I actually look forward to thirty, honestly, because it's like a fresh decade. It's like, okay, you're done with your twenties. Oh, like thank God, like because my my, I, I mean, know, I've had some rough years, so that's true. But then you're gonna have to be counting down the days to your forty once you're thirty. That's the issue. So we gotta. You don't want to break that next milestone. Yeah, but it's know. it's. Ex- <laughs> I don't know. For me, it's like um, I I get excited about getting older, honestly, because uh, you know there's ups and downs, ebbs and flows in life. But ultimately, like I'm getting like I'm experiencing more, which just you just learn more, you get smarter, you get more wise, and that's like refreshing to know that I'm not becoming more ignorant the older I get. Like if, if my life was like Benjamin Button and I was going fucking backward, that would be a fucking nightmare. That would be terrifying. <laughs> like forgetting <laughs> what you learned. Came, does he forget his knowledge from like when he was older as well? I, haven't, I, don't, I don't remember I don't the think movie. He d- no, no, I don't think he did until he became like his brain just got so small as a kid. I think as soon as he like dropped below like 25-ish. I think it's like maybe his frontal lobe was like, you know, decreasing and that was uh, kind of reducing his memories. I have no idea. That, like that whole thing is nonsensical, but yeah. I thought it was, I thought he was going to like keep all of his knowledge as he just deflated and aged the entire time. Imagine like when it gets to the end and you have all of your awareness and you get unborn. That'd be kind of, <laughs> that'd be kind of freaky. I don't know. That's kind of, that'd be wild. That's kind of messed up to talk about. I don't know. 
yeah, but yeah. I, I want to watch that movie again. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't remember like how he progressed and how much knowledge stayed with him and everything like that. Well, let but, me, let me ask you like, so you're 28. Um, yep. Like, like, are you like, I don't know. Cause I, I guess we're probably pretty similar. I mean, just based on our like childhood experiences, even <laughs> we had like pretty similar kind of uh personalities potentially, but like, I don't know. Like, do you, yep. do you like regret your twenties or are you happy that you kind of experienced that? Cause you can learn from it. Like, I don't know. Just like, so I, what I do regret a lot is after I got out of high school, the degree that I picked, because I have deferred my degree. I'm not even joking three separate times and just worked random jobs on the side, like random, like just labor jobs on the side mm. enough to realize that I just do not want to be stuck with anything labor work related. I just hate it. I hate the people you work with. I hate everything about it. I just never want to be stuck in that area. I want to just, so like I should have graduated years ago, but I got addicted to this game. I'll do like one or two subjects a semester instead of doing four, I would defer. And I just kept not actually finishing off my degree. And even now, I'm back this semester. I've got one final subject. So after this subject's done this semester, I'll have a mathematics degree uh, halfway through this year. Hell yeah. But but I I don't know. I should have got it sooner. That's what I'm always thinking about. I'm like, shit, I'm getting old. Like, why don't I have this yet? Why do I not? Why am I not? Like, I'm, I'm sure this is how a lot of people think our age. Like, how am I not completely successful yet? I don't yeah, know if yeah. you... Totally. This is the yeah. main concern. Yeah. I don't know. And I mean, I'm back there now, but it's not something that I do enjoy anymore. It's just, I want that piece of paper because it's a pretty recognized piece of paper. Like if I say I'm a mathematician, that seems like a pretty, I don't know, it's a pretty strong <laughs> yeah. title to have. Yeah. Like. yeah. yeah. No, I, I mean, I dropped out of college, so I never got my degree. Yeah. yeah, I didn't well, even I mean, know what the hell I was doing. To be fair, I didn't, I didn't have any focus when I was in school. I just went to school because I thought that was what you're supposed to do. I was, I was lost. It's a lot yeah. of reasons for that. I just enjoyed like calculus and stuff uh, a lot in like high school and stuff, and I thought it was like super fun. And then I started a math degree. Like the first year or so is pretty. It's still pretty fun. It's like similar to like high school math and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then after that, when you get to the super theoretical, like proof related stuff, super like pure math, like second, third year stuff, and you get to like multi-dimensional calculus and stuff like that, it gets super just, you can't like visualize anything anymore. It just becomes super like theoretical. And it's just when you can't like think of a way to apply the stuff that you're doing, it feels, I don't know, I just lost a lot of passion for it. And I just could not be motivated to do what I was doing. Yep. And then, I, like, I should have finished probably when COVID probably started, I'd say. But then I made my Iron Man and uh, <laughs> I got super addicted. And I just could not, from, like, not going into uni at all because everything was mobile now to being addicted to RuneScape at the same time, I just could not, I couldn't finish it off. It's just impossible. Yeah. You know how addictive... Especially mid game iron. Oh my god, it's bro! This ridiculous. whole game is so goddamn addicting. Yeah, Iron Man just Iron Man took control of my life. I mean, I mean, the thing is, something was going to take control of my life because um, I was vul I was vulnerable. Like I just I was already lost and demotivated about just my schooling and everything else. So it yeah. would have been something, and I'm glad it wasn't like just straight up drugs from the get go, and like uh, just whatever else, <laughs> just you know, just start binge drinking and shit. It was just, it was very innocent, just playing RuneScape a lot. Um, <clears throat> That's the I'm, thing, like we, yeah, yeah go. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, we like look at ourselves like, um, oh, we're wasting our time playing like however many hours of RuneScape a day, or whatever. What does the average person in society even do? Like they'll just they'll watch Netflix all day when they get home from work, or whatever. Like it's the same thing but like a different outlet right like it's 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 i don't know it's still not super productive use of time yeah but then yeah. what is productive and what isn't is completely subjective anyway right so nothing as long as it as long as you're having fun doing it and it doesn't really matter in the end right i suppose i don't know yeah no i mean there's obviously like a lot to talk about in that regard like just what what makes a good life and stuff and it's obviously like subjective for people but um 
Yeah, I try not to like if I like if I'm enjoying myself playing RuneScape because there are there are times that I'm logged in, and I'm just not having a good time, but I'll stay logged in. I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, I'm just I'm actually not having a good time. And I've learned, luckily, over the past like year and a half, to just log out. Like, it's just I mean, even before I that, I, do I, that yeah. I, I never had a problem. I never got. I never played this, like, I played this game a lot, but I never became, like, a mobile player. Like, I've probably clocked in, like, I don't even know, like, maybe 20 hours total on mobile ever. Like, just nothing. Yeah, I'd be similar to you. So, like, when I logged out, I was logged out. I would just enjoy the rest of my day, do whatever, and I didn't think about it. And that was, like, from the get-go with RuneScape. But nowadays, it's even more because... I, I started, like, when I started streaming, I kind of started becoming sort of obsessed with, like, oh, maybe I should AFK something when I'm not logged in, if I'm still going to be on the computer. But now it's like, dude, if I'm not feeling like I want to log in, I just won't log in. And it's it's great. Um, yeah. It's just it's you, What nice do you do thing. when you're not logged in? You go to, surely you do what I do. You got to go to all the streamers and troll them a bit in their chats and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not not to your extent, but I'll, I'll definitely do like the rounds, you know, like I'll, I'll make the rounds on Twitch and uh, um, but like one of the things I really want is like I want to become like more kind of like adventurous. Like I definitely want to experience new things because whenever I experience new things, it's always fun. Like I picked up um, I picked up pickleball last summer and like I got my bike last summer and I've just been loving biking around and I, I love pickleball when it's nice weather. It's going to be nice weather very soon. And just like I know whenever I try new things, which is for me, it's hard because I'm just not wired that way to just be like, yeah, let's go fucking try a billion different things. But um, yeah. as soon as I do it, I, I mostly enjoy it. I mostly enjoy new things. So that, that's like something I really want in my 30s as well is like just experience new things. And uh, but yeah, ultimately like RuneScape, like, dude, I, I, I don't regret um, playing it. And uh-huh. obviously I'm in a privileged position to have it in my job. But yeah. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people once they hit their thirties become a lot like, I don't know, a lot more carefree and a lot less uh, anxiety absorbent. I feel like you just feel just free to just do the things that you have always wanted, like without second get like second thinking. Everything I've heard that's what happens. I don't know if this is true. I guess it's depends on you as a person, though. But yeah, no, I mean, just the older uh, you get you just stop caring about what other people think. And you also realize like everybody was a baby at some point. I feel like when you're a kid, you see adults as like really wise and you should listen to them. And just anybody that's older than you, like knows what's in your best interests and stuff. And you just like trust them for no reason. True. And then you actually get older. And like, I look at my parents now, I'm like, you guys are like, like we're all adults here now. Like, it's just like you, like, you, we're just I, them. Yeah. Like, like, like I still weird. see you as an, as my parent kind of, and there's like this weird sort of relationship, it's like a friendship kind of thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, for me, it's a, I wish it was more, I mean, it definitely is like, I, I definitely have a good relationship with my parents. I just wish it was more like we treat each other very much like adults. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I feel like no matter how far you age, they still will have that little bit of treating you like you are, not an adult, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Like they, I don't they, know. they, they, they're still, like, expecting you. things of you. And it's like, why don't I expect things of you? Like, why don't I just start, like, why don't you yeah. do what I say <laughs> now? Like, son of a bitch. No. Uh, but yeah, like the older you get, you just realize, like, bro, everybody, like, no, like, everybody was born in the last, like, you know, 100 years, basically. Like, so yeah. you don't, you don't know shit. Like you don't, you don't know, like you, like, yeah, like people can be smart and intelligent and everything, but like ultimately like we're all like just so young in the grand scheme of things. Like we're just all like here for a finite amount of time that we die. And it's like, okay, I, I don't need to take everyone's advice so seriously. I'm just going to live my life. And that, that's what's been like the most liberating thing about getting older and like aging my twenties is like finally getting that drilled into my head. It's like deconstructing so many things in my life and then reconstructing who I am and who I want to be and not giving as many fucks. Obviously I'm still a human and there's reasons to give a fuck about what people think. And oh, a it's lot, annoying. Hey, you can't, it's so hard to escape that, isn't it? Well, it's, it's just human nature. What people, yeah. I don't know. But I feel like we are holding ourselves back so much because we care so much what others think. If we didn't care at all and we could like put all of our energy towards just our passions and not have any second thoughts, imagine just how far we would have progressed. I don't know. It's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, like, you've, you, there's so many success stories of people being in their 30s and then 
then they finally discover what they want to do in their mid 30s and yeah. you know, by the time they're in their mid 40s they're just super successful have a lot going for them and like that's great and you know they but they look back at their 20s and they just when you look back at the story of your life you just see like the whole thing of how it led to where you are every moment you're just going to be grateful for it you're like okay i'm grateful i suffered in my 20s i'm grateful i had no fucking idea because it led me to be the person i am now and so it's just like i don't know it's just like all the experiences you have like you don't need to you don't really need to be super regretful for anything i feel like yeah yeah so uh, let's uh get a little bit of an introduction of who you are 50 minutes into this uh cast <laughs> <See> that? <laughs> is that how long we've been going for yeah. already yeah it's rambling <laughs> yeah. about the, ca- the camping trips yeah. and everything <laughs> who am i yeah, we, get, we're, we were already myself. we were already getting deep. This is usually toward the end of the cast. We start talking about this kind of stuff, but uh, let, let, I guess for like those still listening, um, <laughs> uh, who are you and uh, what are you? I guess like known for at least in like the RS scene. Uh, I'd say I'm probably most known for jumping into random Twitch chats, just <laughs> blabbering away a lot. Other than that, probably uh, if you guys have heard of the Venator Bow, I'm probably one of the few people who actually bring that thing into Inferno. So that's probably what a lot of people associate me with is the Venator Bow. I'm probably one of the few who actually know how the thing works as well, I feel like. You actually um, called the Venator Bow? I've always seen you just yeah, type everyone, in chats. I always say Venator. Nah, yeah, everyone calls it Venator. I'm like, yeah. it's Venator. Venator. I don't know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just Australian pronunciation probably. I don't know. But, I mean, you have a uh, fast Inferno time. 42 minutes. Yeah, I'm decent at that. I never really was into um, speedrunning that much to start with, I feel like. I I don't even know when I first started streaming. I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, okay. Actually, let me just tell you the backstory of, like, how I got into old school and, like, sure. all that stuff, I suppose. Okay, so, I mean, I quit after eoc came out all right i'm sure maybe you did too i don't know if you played pre-eoc and stuff i, I, but... I just like little segment like I, I played from 2004 to 2007 and then i quit for eight years i never even thought about the game and then i came back in 2015 so i don't know anything oh. about eoc and stuff i pretty much started playing the moment you quit i started in like 2008 i'm pretty sure mm. whenever it was a bounty hunter crater you know like when wilderness was removed but bounty hunter crater was out yeah, see, I didn't even, I mean, I, I kind of am sort of connecting the dots over the years of, like, what kind of happened in that time, but I wasn't there for any of it. I Literally, as soon as the wilderness was gone and free trade was removed, I fucking dipped. I was like, this game sucks. Yeah, I didn't know what I was missing until that came back, and I was mega addicted when that came out. Mm. I actually found out the crazy thing. Okay, so how did I get into it? I was in a sewing class. So you had to do, like, just random, in, like, year seven in high school. They put you into, like, woodwork and sewing and all these random, like, uh, actual, like, creative classes or whatever. And some dude in the sewing class is like, dude, you like Pokemon? You like this? I'm like, that's garbage. I don't want to click trees and just wait and stuff. <laughs> I, I log on to it and there was just no going back up. And I was just actually just hooked. I told all my friends about it. We're all getting home from school, just playing together. My, I mean, This is the funniest thing ever. One of my friends... He just got mega hooked on the mining skill. I don't know why. Like, we are all free-to-play at the time. He got 96 mining in free-to-play in our career. I'm not even joking. And he just, he just wore one of those rune bucket helmets. I just remember him. All, he'd just be naked with a rune pickaxe and a rune bucket helmet. And Giga anytime you try to talk to him, yeah, he'd be like, shut up. I want them to think I'm a bot so I get a genie. And he wouldn't talk to you because he just wanted, he wanted like, the maximum chance for them to think he was botting. So you get around my back to get away. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> super yeah. all the all the superstitions that we had as kids, that's funny. Yeah, and then I mean I just I don't know, I just kept playing. I, I was really into PKing at the time. I don't know if you remember like Chris Archie and uh I don't know, there's like Dutch LMFAO and stuff like that, and those pure house parties. I don't know. You probably aren't familiar with any of this because you said you did quit in 2007. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I experienced house parties, but not probably that era of them. You never got to experience the turmoil animation and no, soul split. No, oh. no. The, the worst part oh. is like when they come out with like blog posts 
and they talk about that kind of stuff like soul split and just whatever the hell quest gothic while gothic sleeps or whatever oh or while gothic rests whatever the hell that gothic sleeps not it i don't know so they that talk was the about original these, quest but they close yeah yeah like they they talk about these kind of blog posts as if like everyone knows about this right and i'm like dude i don't know what you're talking about like i just don't know any <laughs> of this stuff and the they treat it as like everybody was playing back then right which i mean to be fair vast majority of players probably were but not if I was, I don't know, if I could pick, I would like old school to have been a ripoff of 2010, 2011. I think that's when the game was at its best, to be fair. Uh, that's that's what a lot of people say. But again, like I'm not trusting anybody when they were like 14 years yeah. old, what they thought was fun. <laughs> just the, yeah. But I feel like where we are now is pretty, pretty good as well. Yeah, I feel no, like we're I at think... a pretty good stage right now. This is really good. The game's definitely headed in, in the right direction. The game's in such a great position. And the fact that like we have content that's like super challenging and it's taken yeah. full advantage of like the whole tick system with RuneScape and they they've kept it very like I don't know, they've just they've just been very, very careful over the years to not break things that feel like should have been fixed. Like something like Red X or something like prayer flicking with unlimited prayer. Like things like that. You, so many devs would see that and be like, we need to patch this immediately. Like, this is not balanced. Uh, yeah. But they've been super, super careful with how the player base receives things. And they continue to be super careful. Like, they're always in the blog post. You're seeing them just being... There's always, like, these disclaimers and there's always, like, these just very, like, sensitive notes at the end of paragraphs where, like, hey, like, we understand you guys are... Like, we, we understand the sentiment of the players and we want to be careful about this. Just let us know. And that's beautiful. Yeah, I kind of was losing faith because of the fact that, like, I mean, we had so much good content 2016, 2017, I think it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had Inferno straight into Tom, which is insane. Like, that's the two, still the two best pieces of content ever, both by what, Kieran? Kieran is the goat. I don't think Kieran um, developed Tom as much. He did Cox and... Did uh, not? I thought he did. Or no, he did. He, he did. He did Cox in front. He probably did a little bit of top, but I, I don't think he was the main. Maybe he. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he was. Maybe I could be wrong on that. Yeah. Either way, like I was starting to lose faith. Like it's like how many years since we had anything even remotely challenging? I feel like. Mm. I mean, tear away at high end of creations. Yeah, it's it is kind of challenging, but it's kind of just if you know the mechanics, it's just longer, right? It's just a test of endurance how long can you like flick yeah and stuff like it's like it's not it's not that much harder it's just a test of endurance basically but then we got the dt2 awakened bosses which i feel like i've kind of it's kind of reinvigorated just my hope in them like the fact that that, I, that was actually kind of i don't know it took me a few attempts it was uh I don't know. That was actually so. That's got my hopes up that I think the Colosseum is actually going to be really good. I don't know. I'm super. Yeah, I'm the, actually kind of keen for that. The awakened bosses were amazingly done. They're just so polished, so nice, and they're so fair. That's the best part about it. Is you can go in and you're not going to be RNG'd. You know, it's just it's oh, super, I, super, super fair. I feel like sometimes when I was doing Vardorvis, it was kind of like. You could get some rotations where, like, you have to flick the range and mage as you path through it on, like, an awkward tick. Like, some instances that you walk in, it would be, like, a different rotation of, like, when those two balls happen when you pass through it. So, it was, like, yeah. a bit more awkward to things. I feel like that maybe that was, like, the only RNG aspect, I feel like. It's, like, slight aspects, but it mainly is a display of skill or app, yep. I suppose. Yep, and it's but, it's fair enough because like there there is nothing where you're just going to die because you had a bad layout or a bad thing. It's like nah, everything can be avoided. But I will say like with Vardorvis and I think like Awaken Leviathan, like pretty much all of them kind of have this. I feel like Vardorvis is the most um, clear example of they're really you needing mouse precision as a skill. Like oh, you, yeah. you need you need high mouse precision and that like if you don't have good hardware like if you don't have a good mouse if you don't have a good like refresh rate on your monitor like you're gonna struggle with this kind of yeah. shit. so that, the that's... tick precision the accurate clicks it's super important yeah i feel like that and maybe even like inferno speed runs is similar level of tick precision you need like similar to like clicking a bat <laughs> totally i guess i don't know one of the things that but helped, yeah. the, the, I don't know if this is, uh, like, I'm, I'm curious if you've ever really noticed this, but 
when I really, really, really buckle down and focus, like something like a Vardorvis fight, if I'm really aware of how I'm focusing on the game, one of the things I notice is I perform much better when I very much have my eyes glued to where I'm trying to click. Because I feel like when I'm lazy and I'm just I'm just doing some boring piece of content that just requires a little bit like i'll I'll just i'll literally just be looking at the screen in like a general direction but if i really want to be precise with my mouse movement i am my eye movement is on point i'm just like looking exactly where i want to click and my mouse will move there and i want to so i kind of like start hyper focusing on switching to my prayer switching on the next tile like you know clicking on the next tile dodging this axe whatever and that really helps me i know that sounds like maybe a little bit like obfuscated a little bit for some people listening but like if you really focus on your eye movement that can if as long as your hardware is good enough like your monitor and your mouse and everything like that can actually really help your mouse precision i feel like yeah yeah that's something addy always raves on about you know when addy goes on a tangent and he just goes off rambling for like an hour straight about setups and what's optimal with dpi settings and what's optimal with like how you look at your screen like you know you know that's something that he's super emphasizing on i feel like too Mm -hmm. and it's something that he flamed me for when i got into well i wouldn't say flamed because addy over his years has become a very humble guy as you know he used to be a lot less humble and he's become very humble recently i don't know if you've noticed that transition yeah i mean you just get a lot of community feedback (laughs) that kind of like (laughs) starts shaping you a little bit more i mean it's the same with me just and any creator i feel like kind of has that arc yeah um what was I going to say though? Oh yeah, onto the hardware thing and stuff. When we were talking about like my time starting RuneScape, we didn't really mention the part where I started old school RuneScape. So I want to actually touch yeah. on that topic. Yeah. So I started, <laughs> okay, I started with like, a because I was like super like nostalgic about like pures and PKing and stuff because I played pre-OC and stuff. So I just started like a Gmall pure, pure or whatever. And then I just went and I think I started just when Core End just came out. Was that 2015 or 16? I'm not sure when yeah, 20, Core End came out. 2016. Yeah. So I started then and then I was like, what are these brutal blue dragons? I'm going to kill those. So I go there on my G more pure and then I crossbow seven of them and I get a visage from a brutal green, gr- brutal blue dragon, I think wow. it was. And it was worth a lot at the time. And that amount of money was a lot back then. That was just popping off. And... Yeah, after that, I decided, oh, I got money. I can, I don't know, maybe I should start getting into actually playing the game properly. Like, the PKing scene's dead. Like, I tried to get, like, Clan Wars and stuff and, like, try to, I don't know, like, back in the day, we used to go onto, like, the Clan Wars portal and mess around, like, practicing your PKing, doing, like, your MSB, G Mall and stuff. But that whole community just felt like it, it wasn't super active anymore. So I was like, I have to just... Like, it was still kind... It's not as dead as it is these days, but it still wasn't as active as it was back then. So I'm like, I'm going to give Mainscape a shot, I suppose. So then I do, like, the quest for Zolra. I get hooked on Zolra. I get, like, probably a 1,000 Zolra KC on my main or whatever, and I'm thinking I'm a beast. At this time, Inferno comes out. I'm watching, like... You know how big Inferno was on a release. It was, like, Wooks probably yep. had, like, what, 50k plus viewers? Maybe maybe even more. I'm not Everyone insane. would just cycle through, like, the, the people that were the highest wave. I had, like, four streams open on my college laptop. Yeah, college. and I remember I'm just like, I don't care how hard this is, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm good enough to do this and stuff. And uh, my bank, because I only killed, like, 1,000, 2,000 Zora or whatever. It was 100, probably 100, 150 mil or something. It was not much money at all. I had a friend that, like, he had, like, a 300 mil bank. I'm like, oh, dude, can I borrow your gear or whatever? And he's like, okay, fine, I'm not playing this much. So I borrow it just to get, like, Armadil and the Kodai and stuff. It was still, like, an ACB cape. And then I had to... Because my only PVM experience was Zora at the time, right? Mm-hmm. So I was, like... I just... I didn't know any... Like, I didn't even know how ticks work or anything yet when I first got into Inferno. I was playing on a laptop that ran RuneScape in a probably 20 FPS. Like, it was the laggiest. It was so bad. There's no clients at the time. The floor looks like Holy it's just all over the floor. <laughs> um, so, that was the situation for me. I'm just... I think the only guides were, like, Pot Up Sun and... I think, Jesus Christ. I think Rakeski had, like, a brief overview of how he did his. I think that were the two things at the time. And I was just watching him, and I was so hooked. Like, I... It took, I think it took me two or three. So 
anyone who watches my stream who sees how I am now, mm -hmm. just know that we all started somewhere. Like I, it took me two or three months for my first game. I mean, I played on a 20 FPS laptop and used an ACB for my first one, but I'm, it probably took me, I'm not even joking, like 30 Zucks to get my first one. Wow. It was real bad. It would like freeze. My first triples, I yep. sneezed all over my laptop screen and I couldn't see the screen. My God, that was my first <laughs> ever triple. I'm Jesus not even, like, it, it was the biggest sneeze and I couldn't see. And I just died. <laughs> so bullshit. And at funny. the same time, it was like going for my first cape. I don't know if you remember EV Scapes journey when he got like the tattoo on his leg and stuff of the eagle eye acb mm. no, it was my no. inspiration at the time because we were both going for our first cape side by side he's going for the eagle eye acb i'm going for rigor acb and um it was just it was just hilarious watching him on zuck he'd have like the dins on and bring like a bcp in the corner just putting it on he'd still get hit constant 40s through his thing because he doesn't have rigor he's got eagle eye and he's praying that oh it was just yeah, yeah. It, it was a huge struggle, though. And yeah, then straight after up, that, it was, yeah. It was funny. After I finally managed to get my cape and, like, Tob came out and stuff, I was one... So, I this is my only PBM experience was Zolra and Inferno. That was all I had done. Mm -hmm. So, I would go to, like, Cox to find a team, and then people would be like, dude, you're running head. And I'm just like, what does that mean? And then... And, and, like, people weren't, like, cape buyers or sellers yet, so that wasn't even heard of. So, people yeah. didn't people didn't even accuse me. Like, how does this guy not know what running the head is and he has an infernal cape? Yep, <laughs> it's yep. like, people just expect you to take that transition in the path of PBM, I feel like. And I remember when Tob came out, when the red crabs would come out on Verzik, I'd be like, I don't have to hit those. You guys have cheese cape. I have the infernal cape. I got better <laughs> DPS. You guys stay on those crabs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. I'd accept that. I was like the only infernal cape on the team. It was good times, bro. Now just and, and getting an infernal cape because I got mine a year after release on my iron, and I mean, just I felt like such a goddamn giga chad. Just like you, there's just no get, feeling that compares. I feel that you, like. you get that ego that just like yeah, you're doing team content and people see you and like okay, like uh, yeah, I'll I'll be the fucking just you know servant boy that's killing the killing the red crabs for you sir like you're you have the infernal cave like you're clearly the alpha of this group <laughs> um but no uh, one of the one of the best parts was um just like being able to slay in an infernal cape back when there was because you got yours uh win like uh, several months after release oh uh, no nah, it was probably like eight or nine months after release okay. i would say so it was then. like the next year it was like early of the next year i'm imagining yeah around then um, maybe Maybe it was like May or June the next year. I'm not sure. Okay, because I got mine in June of the next year. So it was 28, sure. 2018. It was like it was like a few days. It was it was several days before Tob released. It was like a yeah, week before Yeah, that was about Tob the same released. for me too, yeah. Yeah, so getting that cape, I mean, just total giga chad status. I mean, I just... Ooh, but the thing is, I was so intimidated by Tob. I didn't do Tob for the next, you know, eight months or so because I was just like... It's like if like, if you it didn't, it was so hard to get on a team. Like oh, you it was had to so build hard. Your fresh team. Yeah, and, yeah. and the thing is, I was invited initially because I had an infernal cape, you know, and I had some other Iron Man that had infernal capes. Like, hey, we're gonna go run some tops. You want to join? And I was like, nah, because I just didn't want to like reset and lose a bunch of GP. Because this is back before like there was death cover. Like you'd actually just have to pay raw GP on an iron every death. Yeah. Oh, yeah. did you play nine at that stage? I didn't play Iron Man. Yeah, this is all Iron Man. Man. This is all Iron Man. And yeah. so I was like, ah, I'm just not really that interested. And then as soon as several months passed, then it was impossible to get a team because I had zero KC. And I'm like, fuck. Like, that was a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when when do you start yeah. your Iron then? Uh, Well, so I did Tob then. Like, I was a complete Tob bot once that came out for like probably a year or two, I would say. I was just completely, completely addicted. Like, I'd probably do Tob for 12 hours a day. Like, I'd get into Discord. I'd be like, Wild. is there a spot open on the team? And then you'd see if there's... It, there'd be, like, a lot of toxicity of, like, who's getting chosen for that slot or whatever. Because mm. it'd be hard to, like, slip in for that yep. last moment. But as I was saying, it was hard to actually form a team to start unless you knew people who are already... So I had to, like... I had to... We had to all build ourselves up from scratch. Like the team that I went on, we all were like learners together as well. Like a lot of people are lucky these days because they have people who know what they're doing to like teach them 
we had to all like learn together though. It was super intense. Like you've all got the whips just trying to take down your first Verzik and it's just super insane. Yep. That, I know. Yeah. Our DPS was so much less back then. And it, when you didn't have scythes, I mean, it's just it's brutal. I don't know how it was that addictive for me back then though. Like I can do probably three tobs these days, maybe two. And then I'm just like, it's literally just clicking the boss, moving back and forth. This is boring. Like, I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> I well, enjoyed it's, it's because it's like, so prestigious back then. It was so prestigious to even be involved in Tob, and you are making filthy amounts of GP back then. Oh, Just yeah. Filthy. My first three soft splits were all in trio and were all over three bill, which was insane. <sighs> so, so that was pretty good. crazy. Yeah, that's fucking yeah. nuts. Yeah, but so I did that for ages, and then I met a friend who was into like solo Cox. I hadn't really even done team Cox, as I told you before, because mm -hmm. like. I was like, I don't even know how to run the head or whatever. And I thought, like, Solo Cox was crazy. I was like, how do they, they do Solo Cox? So I was like, can you just show me the basics of how it works and stuff? So I got, like, a Discord call with him. He showed me how, like, Solo Cox works. That's the thing. I feel like a lot of people don't break free of, like, the newbie phase into, like, the kind of the next step unless you, like, meet people and, like, who have experience and things and like get into like discord communities and stuff I feel like you don't really break free of that you know what i mean like you yeah, have to yeah, meet no, people to straight up progress, I, I, feel like. I was pushed to get myself into chambers i was so intimidated by everything oh like, yeah literally i would not have gotten my infernal cape if it wasn't for me just spooning a tebow out of control i mean i got my fr my friends just begged me to go to chambers i'm like okay fine then i pulled a tebow i'm like oh shit like i could actually get an infernal cape and then at that point just like totally <laughs> kicked off everything else if it wasn't for that, okay. Like, KC, did you get it on twenty? Yeah, that is that 20, is so twenty KC in a trio. I mean, this is like I probably had two hundred thousand points total, like maybe four hundred thousand points. So I think I was getting like 20, 20 or twenty five K points a raid, and I think the first like ten, yeah, because you suicide died, died like five yeah. times. No, no, it wasn't even from suicide. I was just doing normal unscaled trios. Like you only get like twenty five K points. Uh, oh each. yeah. It's just, it yeah. just bad. And we would just try to find the, like, easiest, like, calmest, newbiest raids, you know? We're like, don't do vanguards. It's too scary. Like, don't do that. Like, don't do any of this. Just, yeah. <laughs> it was, like, one specific layout. Was, yeah, like, we would just scout for, like, like 30 feeding. minutes. Yeah. I don't know. You said your first were doing, like, trios without, like, uh, any scaling or anything. I don't know how difficult that is. Even to this date, I don't really know how to do team raids i've done like two to three thousand solos but i've done almost no team raids i don't yeah. even know how to do team no no same I'm, I'm, I'm literally with you we're like when people are like set mage hand or something in a team i'm yeah, like what, what the do fuck that. does like, that do? mean <laughs> I yeah I actually I, don't know. I know me neither dude like I'm, I'm actually a fucking ignorant when it comes to team raids i'm like okay let me just run like if i'm ever doing a mass i'm just like i'm running head because i don't know what the fuck i'm doing like, yeah, yeah. But with set solos, like, I've that? I've mastered solos. It's just like okay, we, this is a breeze. Yeah. I know exactly how to set. I know everything that's going on. Like it's just good. But I, I feel like as, I feel like there's just one disconnect. Where as soon as I understand that, team raids would make perfect sense. It's just something about oh, like yeah. it's just because the head's moving to another side, and so I feel like that just throws me off. It's like what what's happening? Like what? Like, yeah. I guess setting it only just means like make it so it specs on a specific side and then you skip that or something, right? I don't know. It's something like that. I haven't yeah, done it, yeah, but... Yeah. It's, but... I wouldn't know the cycle, though. Like, off the top, if I yeah, went, went into a raid, I'd be like, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's just like guess and check, basically. Yeah, it's embarrassing. I feel like Solo Cox, though, when you first get into it, that is super overwhelming when you first get into it, I feel like. Oh, yeah. Is, that was brutal. Uh, that was the hardest thing to ever learn in this game. Get... That was the, that so. was the <laughs> hardest thing to learn in this game was solo cops. I actually think so too. And you're getting so pissed off when you're just trying to like learn four to one, and then it puts the portal on the other side of the room just nonstop every time you try to like like you finally almost in the cycle and the bloody portals all the way. Like, I swear I was like actually gonna like I swear I was gonna like punch a hole in my computer <laughs> screen whenever the portal. <laughs> Were you the same? Like oh my god, I think bro, I've never been that mad. Well, I just I, I just remember going in there. <laughs> I remember learning this is again after Infernal Cape everything like I started learning solos after Infernal Cape and I went in there and I just remember just first fucking prep room I'm just like I'm just gonna make like 80 brews right now because this oh is going God. to be a literal shit show and you know it's just like again this and is like the was. first like 10 raids it probably took me legitimately like 150 to 200 solos to finally 
be able to comfortably no prep. Like, yeah, just comfortably. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, I Unless can go in. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I would scout for like 15 minutes every raid, but it's just like, give me a good raid, yeah. give me a good layout, and we're good now at this point. And and I was very comfortable with head face. So if I did run out of bruise, and, and again, like for people wondering, like, this is before Blood Fury was a thing. I didn't do a single solo raid with a Sanguinesti. This is, um, I mean, I, I guess oh, yeah, I remember a, you got your super late. I do remember. No, I, I, st I still don't have oh, a Sanguinesti. Yeah. Yeah, still don't okay, have well, I guess I don't remember. Yeah. So, so this was, I mean, this is just trident and just like torture stuff. And so like it, when you're taking a beating, you're taking a beating. And like, but I got comfortable enough with head phase. And again, this is all with a Tebow. So I was very blessed. I, it took me like 300 for rigor. So that was a pain. But like, oh, you know, yeah. I, I was blessed. I, I, I was blessed so much by just enjoying Tebow throughout all my solos. That was amazing. That, that would that, be... I could not say the same thing about Tob. That was all whip, Tob. That sucked. Yeah. I, um, actually, to start that, I'll go on to the next point. Yeah. Um, so after I'd done all these solos and whatnot, I had, I was in that mentality, you know, that like Adakon's whole personality is built around just hating on Iron Man. <laughs> kind of. I mean, it's not his whole personality, but like, you know how it is a major thing with him is, Screw irons, I don't know. He doesn't mean it, obviously. That's like anybody like, that's a like, main, though. Let's be honest. Yeah, anyone that's... That was me at the time, too. I'm I mean, sure that's that was... me, too, and I'm an Iron Man. Like, fuck yeah. Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, But that was me, and I just... Everyone was telling... Every, all my friends who were playing mains just slowly started transitioning to iron, and I'm just like, I can't do it. I don't, I don't want to play early game in the end. I don't want to do it and stuff. Yeah. like, no, do it. You enjoy it so much. I'm like, I'm not doing it. And they just kept peer pressuring me, and I finally just succumbed, and I, I did it. And I remember screen sharing to my friend in Discord, and I'm just being like, "Look how efficient I am! Like I'm, like doing my Banshee's task. Like, like what was I doing? I was doing my questing to like do Priest in Peril or whatever with a bone crossbow. I'm not, I'm not sure if it was Priest in Peril, but it was something going between that part where you do Priest in Peril, and I'm like shooting the bats while I'm like running and like no XP waste and stuff, and I'm like so proud. And he's just, I was just enjoying this. It's crazy how much you enjoy just the simple things when you. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. When you start an iron. It's amazing. Yeah. And I eventually, this was before like Bofor and stuff came out. I decided this was, so I think Prif had just released. So like Blade of Sailor was like the only thing that was, um, that was like the main drop you could get. Yeah, yeah. There was, there was no, no like enhanced seed or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I got there and I was like, I'm going to try my luck at that. Like I'll skip getting a whip and stuff. I think I was like 68, 70 Slayer or something. So I did Gauntlet for a bunch. I think I did 68 Corrupt Gauntlet, and then I got the Blade. So that was wow. mega, mega lucky. And then I just stayed there till full Crystal too. And then I got my full Crystal Armor set, and I used it with a... Like, Crystal Armor with Crystal Bow wasn't actually that bad. Yeah, it wasn't. And I decided this was my goal. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take a different route. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my full crystal crystal bow to kill Zolra with range only with crystal bow and full crystal. And uh, I'm going to get a blowpipe and then I'm just going to do Inferno for all my Slayer XP because I can't stand doing killing normally. I don't want to do barrage neck reels and stuff. That's boring. So I go to Zolra with just my full crystal and eagle eye and guess how many, guess how many I kill. Okay, so guess how many I killed before I got my first Non onyx drop. One hundred. <laughs> more. Way more. Five hundred. More. Thousand. More. Not not two thousand. <laughs> it was almost. It was fifteen hundred and twenty six, and I had one onyx and no other hits at the table at fifteen twenty six. Jesus Christ, that's horrible. And I did all these kills with crystal bow, full eagle crystal eye. eagle eye. It yeah. was probably. Like 15 kills an hour, so it was real bad. Yeah, that's cringe. But I was just like, I need that pipe. So, I, and then at 1526, it's my second. Like, think about that. That's like 12, 13 x drop rate. Like, that's insane. It's something like that. It's like, how is that even possible? I think I calculated it, and I'm one of like three players who's went that dry ever, which was. Wait, wait. So this is like my drop rate. Drop rate. So they're they're one in one twenty eight. One hundred twenty eight. Yeah, but, but and I got but, one drop in fifteen hundred. No, 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 no. Okay, well, well, it's one in 128 for one of the four, but they're all one in... So it's actually more like one in 170-ish, like one in 171-ish, because you're excluding the Onyx drop from it. 
I guess, but that was the only thing I got. So that was still like 9x rate, but yeah, I can't say like just non-unique because you did get Onyxes, right? Like you said, you got a couple Onyxes. I got one Onyx one and Onyx. that was it. Okay, that's, one that's, Onyx that's, and 15 that's, that's fucking wild, but... Uh, <laughs> that is, I think that's one of the worst dry yeah, streaks that, ever. That's, that's, that's horrendous. Jesus. So, oh yeah, and but... I remember everyone, like, in because we're all Lions, and you know how all Lions at the stage just hate each other for getting lucky or whatever? I don't know. Oh, you hate yeah, you just, just they... fucking just, you're so jealous. You're pissed off yeah. at somebody getting something. Yeah, I remember, I remember those days. Those days of. Or you're nice. like, you hate people crying about, like, going dry or whatever if they're not even dry. Oh, yeah, like there's so much. Yeah. Like, you just have to hate on each other. I mean, you just have to get <laughs> yeah. pissed off. You have to not, you have to, like, non, like, non, G you have to GZ people, but deep down, you're like, I hate you. Like, you suck. Yeah. And then you see people but get I, like their their like fourth scythe in like three hundred cases. That was for me. Oh, I just, you see the same Iron Man like, dude, I keep getting scythes. Like just I just wanna rape you. I'm like, just go to hell, dude. Like literally. <laughs> I'm kind of in your stage at the moment with uh nightmare kind of. So I mean I spooned oh, with that Wizard was, of Snark. That was the worst place. Yeah, that, okay. Just that was but, the worst place <laughs> seeing people get maces. Right now, I've killed, I'm not even joking, 1,300 Fasani and gotten one orb, and that's it, and 1,300. Bro. And I haven't even hit the armor table. That and, is <laughs> so bad. I oh, know. <laughs> and everyone, everyone remembers <laughs> the parts when you get lucky. They don't remember the parts when you get unlucky. They blame you when, like, you get, don't you reckon? I don't know. Yeah, no, it's always that way. It's like, you get lucky one place, and they just discount every single time you've gone unlucky, yeah. I remember my first ever thing I had to get on my Iron Man was, an a, orb. <laughs> was a black mask. This is the first, I, I still get flamed for this for complaining about the black mask. But guess how many kill, I guess how many I had to kill for my first black mask? I don't know, 1,500? More. 3,000. <laughs> almost 2,475 for my first yeah. black mask whenever i hear of people like actually ever bringing up their black mask luck i'm gonna be fully luckily you've brought up some examples prior to this but anybody that like still talks about their black mask look i'm like okay just I, I everything you say now is just discredited like who the fuck cares who the fuck cares about your <laughs> black mask kill count yeah i mean it's not much time in the grand yeah. scheme of things when you compare it to like other grinds like hydra and raids yeah. and stuff yeah. but <laughs> yeah <laughs> But I had no other perspective yet. Like this was my first ever yeah, grind yeah, no, and no, I no, like no, I first. I, I, I I'm like, why that. am I going? Why am I going dry on my first ever grind? This is bullshit. Like I don't know. It's just. The, I think the and first then, the the first Iron Man grind that really is like okay, this is respectable. Is the Dragon Warhammer grind? Like for the that okay, that, 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 that that's respect like, mine. <laughs> what 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 did you get it at? Was it early? <laughs> Ninety. Ninety. <laughs> yeah. That's wild. But, yeah. But okay, so, so this lucky. is what happened. I got really unlucky with that black mask. I go to Gauntlet, I get the blade at like 68 KC or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then I try to go get my blowpipe because I told you my plan on to do like Inferno for the whole Slayer grind. Mm -hmm. And then I just go mega dry there. And I can't even get anything. And then when I finally pull the drop at the end, it's a mage fang and I can't even use it because I'm like 70 Slayer. So I got nothing to equip it to anywhere. Mm. And I think I went on and got the pipe at probably 2000 or something. The moment I got the pipe, I went to Lizardman Charmin. I killed them for one hour, and then I got the Dragon Warhammer straight after the fight. I was in the same night, and it was that is the most dopamine I think I've ever received, other than like the Tebow. I feel like that's the most dopamine. One, one of the a single night. One of the best things, like I like this past year, twenty twenty three. I just like I was so burnt for a lot of it, and I just like wasn't really grinding that much. And as soon as leagues came out. I decided to grind out my Void Waker. And so, like, it took me, like, a week to grind out my Void Waker. Got my Void Waker. And then, like, just the maybe, like, three nights later, on the same, within within 12 hours, I complete Toa, and then I, I and then I green log Nex. So, I, I finally is... get the Masori body that I've been looking for, and then the Torva plate, like, just within hours. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I was just in heaven. I was like, thank yeah. God. Like, and it just all comes in at once. It's like... I'm it's weird how that happens. You go on, like, such crazy dry streaks, and then you get, like, a dopamine overload in, like, a few days. And then you go on, like, half a year of being dry again. Yeah. Like, right now, yeah. I'm on that half a year of being dry again. I kind of remember... That's the thing that sucks about, like, Game Iron. Like, it's, it's not fun to get one dopamine hit per half a year. Like, I don't know. I can't... But when I those can't dopamine hits... My last unit. Dude, the dopamine hits, they hit really hard, though. Um, like, the, I guess it's all sort of balanced. Like, uh, ultimately, like, there's, it's not like it's a like, super much, uh, it's probably the equal amount of dopamine, technically, but I feel like the way you perceive it is a little bit different. But, uh, 
Well, well I, I just wanted to say this, like, because one of the things, at least because I'm I'm like, like a giga nerd when it comes to Iron Man mode. I'm like super, super, super long term. And um, yeah. one of the best parts about my account is just the third age luck. Because like I deserve do you have now? five. That's that's not a lot for how much you've done, right? Like you've done. No, it is. It lot. is a lot because I only deserve three. Oh, is it? I only deserve uh, three. And I've done a shit I thought ton you've of done, like I thought you've done nearly the most clues in the game. I know you're I like have. super I'm, passionate I, I, about that. I have done a shit ton of clues. Uh, I've, I'm like rank three hards, rank one elites. Um, I don't know. Maybe like second page masters or something. That, so That just goes to show how hard the collection log is to complete. If you're like that higher ranked and that's, your, that's you getting lucky... Like, no one's finishing that log ever. There's zero chance. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I mean, I'm an Iron Man, so I have a lot of limitations where mains just can, like, buy their close scrolls. But, um, no, straight up, like, that is... When I think of, like, unluckiness, you know, you think of the Black Mask grind, you think of all these other grinds and stuff. The thing you don't want to be dry on when you're in my position is Third Age. And that is where I'm just like, okay, overall, when people, you know, because some people ask the question, like, do you think your account's, like, overall lucky or unlucky? I'm 100% in the camp of pure lucky because... I could be a person that has my clue count and still doesn't have a piece of third age, you know, easily. Yeah. And so many people go 3x rate of shit. That is ridiculous how rare it is. Imagine having the pickaxe and an iron. That is just the ultimate. That nah, is the ultimate. Nah, I don't, I don't, ever. Nah, I don't think so. Um, in fact, uh, like, okay, so I know most people say the, the, the pickaxe is the best piece. I actually like the more classic pieces. Um, I like the like long the body sword. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I love the really classics. I mean, because I have the body, legs, and shield. And I just look fucking. Oh, that would look pretty hot. <laughs> Dude, look, 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 at, look at my look at this. Look, look at what I'm wearing right now. I'll just show you a picture. <laughs> yeah, that was the guy that you look up, look up to in the day pre OC, wearing that whole like third age armor set. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> that is yeah. pretty nice. I always have to flex. It's a shame account. that they should be. They, you know what they should do? What? They should make it. You can combine. Third age with Torva, so then you have best in slot, and you can flex your third it's, age. It's, so it's, it's not funny because like, like, like there's actually been multiple people that have brought up that exact suggestion, and I'm not the one. And I'm like, hell yeah, guys! It, like, good, thank you, like, thank you. Like, I don't have to fucking say a word, and people are already like advocating for it. I'm like, because uh, if I say a word about it, just everyone's gonna meet yeah. about it. But no, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm seriously actually not for that because first of all, that would never pass in the first place. I already been fully aware of that. And on top of that, it's just unnecessary. It's like, yeah, it'd be kind of cool to flex, I guess, but it's like, it's just it's weird. But you can only use that for bank standing right now. I don't know. It'd be kind of cool but to that's, do your PVM, But that's the it? whole purpose of Third Age. It's a literally just flex shit. I mean, that's just the whole purpose. It's just, just I don't flexing. know. But, it, but it's nice to always be able to flex. It's nice to be able to flex when you're doing anything. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, it would be. Yeah. No, and, yeah. and actually... Uh, just on, on that point, I have always been advocating for things like, because I want these um, sort of cosmetic max capes. And one of the ideas was like, what about if you completed 2000 CMs, you could attach the 2000 cape to a max cape and get all the perks of a max cape with no other benefits, but you have this new like sexy cape that kind of has that sort of theme to it. And then you'd have the 2000 top cape, you'd have a thousand LMS cape, you'd have a champion's cape version. Like these, these different variants were like, you can attach them, combine them to your max cape, and so you look like a Giga Chad. See why the they don't have even more options. Like it's just a GP sync to have these options, right? You might as well have more. Yeah, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. You might as well have every option. That there's no reason to not have infinite yeah. options, right? I don't know. It's, yeah, it's no, healthy. That's, to, yeah. that's what I think too. There's like yeah. a lot of like purists. Like obviously everything in this game like is subjective. It's just all what you. Is like, there's nothing right or wrong. Uh, but there, there are a lot of like really kind of weird purist takes out there. But it's just like they don't want anything to change, and they they become pretty dogmatic about like just the simplest things, like something like why can't we have max cape color changes? And people are like genuinely against that. Just the, no, like no, it needs to always be this. I'm just like this is why does so, it matter? Like how does I know that it's, so, it's like so like, silly. Like I can understand some things. Where it just becomes egregious, like okay, I I obviously don't want Bandos or Torva to start looking like just I hate what they like did a naked overlock, the overlock, override or something. But what? 
I hate what they did to the original Torva design. I reckon they it looked way better the way it was before. Dude, like, Torva in general has always looked like shit. The only reason I think it I looks agree, good in any I agree, but I think form, it looks even worse there. Yeah, yeah, no, I think uh, there's definitely... A, I mean, the thing is, is, that, is it passed. So the community clearly was okay with them changing it. But... Dude, I feel like Tor the model that they proposed didn't look like the one that got implemented into the game. They're like, this one looks like it's actually made out of plate. It looks like a, I don't know, like a toddler drew it or something. Dude, like, like, we're the, comparing, like we're comparing so poop bad. to poop. Like, I, I've never <laughs> liked the look of Torva. When you compare Torva to Bandos, I mean, bro, bro Bandos is iconic. It's yeah. so, so well designed. It's simple. It's just... No, there's not many that's what we all aspired to get as kids like when yeah. you saw that kid with that spiky shoulder blade you just you just it's just the giga chat just looking up mean, to him e like even even blood torva like i'm wearing it right now like cool you know at least at least what torva does have is it's i do like blood looks torva. tanky it looks yeah. tanky but i'm still not a fan like i would much rather it be bandoscape like i really hope when you know several years down the line when we get a new melee set I hope they like kind of go back to like the, I don't know, just design something that I don't know. I, maybe this is all just a fantasy in my mind, but it's like I want something that reminds me of Bandos again. Like just, I know, but now we associate it with looking like a, you're a noob if you have it. I don't know. I says. know it's so <laughs> bad, and that and that's the reason why I've kind of grown to like Torva a little bit more. Because when it was first being pulled, when Next was being pulled, I was like, this shit looks like garbage, and I had no nostalgia oh, yeah. attachment at all. Because I didn't play back then, yeah. so there's they're people with the nostalgia, like, yeah, let's get that. This looks amazing, and they're like, they're they're reliving what they thought when they were like 11 years old. Um, but for yeah. me, I was like, this actually just looks just bad, just horrible. <laughs> and now I just have to deal with it because it's best in slot. So it's like, yeah. All I was thinking was that's more max hits for me. I, I yeah. want that. I didn't. I didn't even. I mean, I did care a bit. If it looks that bad, then you have to care a bit. I feel like mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't care about designs that much as long as they give me the stats, but it, to a certain extent, if something looks extremely Dude, remember when, horrible... Remember when I, they were showing off Masori? Like the oh, original Masori? the original design. It looked like super like Egyptian looking. I can't remember what the first Oh my god, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to find this. This was just fucking <laughs> egregious, dude. Masori. Yeah, I think everyone was like... It was like 95% people opposed to it, though, to start. Talking about... Uh, Dry streaks though, and Torva. You know, my iron currently still doesn't have van braces, and it's like five thousand two hundred shards. How Wait. ridiculous is that? Wow, you still don't have van braces? Nah, I've got full Torva, three hilts, three ZCBs, two pets. I can't get the most common drop. Holy shit! So stupid. And I just, it's hard when you're a bit burnt as well. That is the hardest boss to do when you're not. Super enjoying the game, I feel like, as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, where is this? I'm trying to find when they... They, they made, like, a video of it. Um, do you remember? I think so. Of, like, I'm rotating around showing, yeah. like, the new it, assembler it, it and stuff was, as well with it. it. it was, no, 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 it wasn't... I don't... I think this is before the new assembler, so it was, like, mixing just so many random-ass colors. Fuck, I can't find it. I can't find this. Um, oh, wait, is this it? I actually yeah, this is yeah, it. I oh my this god. Exactly. This was so like I know this looks pretty similar. But it's like Jesus Christ. <laughs> this was, let me link this to you in a second. I'm just looking at it on my end. Like Dude, oh my god. It had the armadillo like hell I'm like fucking sticking out. Like you see you see later here. Let me just link it to you real quick. What did they not have a, a mask design for it yet or something? No, it did, but it was like half armadillian. It was just like what the fuck is going on? Like I was so butthurt about this. I thought Oh, I mean it obviously looks a lot worse than the current design and it looks Bro, like, what is... It's Emperor's new groove. It's... I know! It's just like... <laughs> okay, there's there's green boots. There's yellow gold everywhere. It's just like gilded, and then there's like blue mixed in, and then there's like some light gray, and there's like a fucking cyan backpack, and just a green... It's like every... It's like, what is going on here? Like, this is just... <laughs> I, I was seriously having a meltdown. Like, I was just like... I, I, I didn't like make a bunch of rambles on this, but I just remember like... 
It, I was like, this is just so horrendous. Like, dude, there's a fucking, like, yeah, like there's an Emperor's New Groove thing, like, sticking out in the back of his head. Like, what is this? Like, what is this, dude? I was, I was so irritated by this. I'm like, who what, what is this? What do you think about the current design? You think it's good now? It, it, it's fine. It's just... Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me put it on real quick. So for those watching on YouTube, for those listening, I mean, you can kind of get the, just, okay. So it's fine. Um, the, I think the helmet's a little bit bulky, like with the fortified, it's just like, it's just yeah. too, like if you, if you didn't have the full set, you're kind of looking like what the hell is on your head. So I wish that was a little bit thinner. Um, but no, it looks fine. The the other thing is like, why are the arrows only like you know seven inches long? Like, what the hell's going on there? Like, I, that was actually one of my biggest gripes. This is actually one of the pick. Oh my god, this oh, was I so. Say that now. This was so embarrassing. Okay, look at this. That's not even so, something I noticed until you. No, 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 no. no watch <laughs> this. This, this was this was this was the redesign. Like, you know, and um, let me pull this up on my. That's end. not. Look at the arrow. That's redesigned. Look at the arrow on. His, uh, the arrow is four inches that's long. That's a dot. That's a dot. That's not even an arrow. It's a fucking arrow, dude. It's a dot. <laughs> that's not a dart. That's it's clearly an arrow. Yeah, but look at the one furthest to the right. It looks like a mithril dart or a bronze dart. Are you high? Like that is yeah. not a dart. Like, do you know what a dart is? It, yeah, that's a small arrow, basically, right? That's. I mean, I guess kind. Of, if you're thinking of like darts, but I'm I'm thinking of like RuneScape darts. Like that's not a RuneScape dart. Like that. I mean, I understand what you're trying to say. Like, if you're playing darts in your fucking apartment or something, but like, yeah, but this... they did keep the emperor's new groove and the yeah. I think I think this is the yeah. I think look a bit better. This is like slightly different potentially to what we just saw. But like, what the hell was that arrow sticking there? Like, I that... like the, I like the oh, oh okay. Is the unfortified the one where you got like the whole skirt coming down and not like the gold plate over your penis? That, yeah, the, so the gold plate is over your penis is the uh, fortified. That's the fortified. Yeah, I think I prefer the normal one. That looks way cooler. You got like the yeah, totally. I don't know, I agree. Skirts, whatever. I think that's actually a decent design. Besides the emperor new, the emperor's new groove. I think if you just had that bottom and that top, that would actually look alright. Yeah, I don't know. And then the finally, the, you know, and then and and you know what I really wanted? I thought this would be cool. Is um making uh having a um what's it called a uh, a yellow form of pagasian boots so it's like a golden version yeah i don't know they haven't done that yet Should i thought that would have been really cool because that would have like been the masori pagasian boots it still looks way off like it's i still feel like they have to do something about that yeah though the problem is, is like just the fact that it's so gold and just like it just it wasn't typical range colors i think that just kind of threw me off in general but uh, i don't get how we haven't had a boot upgrade yet as well like when did cerberus come out and it's the last piece of gear that we need yeah. to like now, have that, actual strength on that would make the most sense coming out next is a boot upgrade straight up um so pagasian boots now have range bonus to it like our range strength yeah uh, whatever the eternal new variant is and make them gold as well yeah well, i wouldn't be against them being gold at this point um you know maybe just be able to have them green or gold because I actually still like green. A green fits range. I don't think we all need to go down like the gold route, but Missouri, it does. But, but it doesn't fit Missouri. But yeah, yeah, it does right. fit range in general. Who knows? Maybe they'll just be like kind of like black and green. That would actually be pretty fucking dope. Yeah, Eternals as well. They definitely yeah. upgrade and, those as well. And, and they could be kind of like the forest green on the Missouri already. Like that's that really dark sort of forest green. They could even be that, and that would be appropriate. I think. Yeah, because um, that would still match the story. Yeah, um, I think what they were thinking yeah. bringing out like prims with strength, and then the other two just accuracy. Like, why did they not initially just design them all to be like like super? They useful? were just they were just so much more careful back then. They just just worried about like power creep and stuff. Yeah. When I mean, it's really even because because I mean, we already had dragon boots and they were plus four strength, and so you got a one extra strength bonus. That is, yeah, that is so wild. just... It's wild. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was, just, that, that was... I actually missed those days, though, because I loved it because those things still held immense value because you're just... Any sort of thing that is best in slot will be bills. I mean, not bills, but just whatever... However long the grind takes, you know. 
Um, just that whatever's best in slot is going to be best in slot, and that's what that's what I love about like this. Just a very very minimal power creep. Problem is we're now all obsessed with just just if this isn't going to blow my fucking head off, like with just like the shadow for example. The shadow is the clearest example. Oh. Of just something so egregious. It's just the biggest change ever. Don't get me wrong. Like it's fun just launching bazookas basically at people just in this game, and that's what the that's what the shadow feels like. Uh, Everything else feels so underwhelming now. It's in terms so of bad. Accuracy. I know. Like if you're comp- if you literally you are you're looking like a clown if you have a sanguine and you're killing whisper with it. Like, oh you're, yeah, you're a clown. Like you're just that like, is the shadow so bad. just doesn't miss. Like it feels like even when you use like melee and range now, we need to do we need to triple the accuracy of those two as well just now? So like bad. it just I know. it feels like don't you reckon they feel like shadow and now feels and now insane. people literally think the scythe is underwhelming even after a buff to it i'm like bro this is how bad it is like now we're comparing everything to the shadow and so now people want the scythe to be just you know 80 percent better than the next second best in slot weapon just because it's a mega rare and now people have this like fucking skewed thing where mega rares need to be the thing you use everywhere and you know if it's not then it's not classified as a mega rare and it's all because of the goddamn shadow like just i'm so bothered by it but it's like whatever imagine eternal actually get that boost as well that's gonna be insane yeah i mean again like i i try to just enjoy the game for what it is and obviously i'm still a player i love being able to just annihilate things but it has to come at great cost and that's what the scythe originally did really well was it just had a very hefty cost to use it you you weren't gonna use it repeatedly but yeah yeah, what? I know that's where me and you differ in like what we. <laughs> I know that like I I just want to get away with just spamming it. I know you. No, want everyone the cost, does. But... No, every and, and yeah. there should be a way. Like, for example, like I I I'm not even like saying you need to do some skilling activity to get this. I was even I I th- was throwing out ideas because you know people. I, I be, I I understand. I was sort of, kind of obsessed with this idea of charging the fang and charging these things back with like oh, the Adicon yeah. no monkey cast and of course that one get, got like a hundred thousand fucking views so you know people are discovering my podcast for the first time They're like this guy's fucking delusional he's just <laughs> rambling on about the same goddamn <laughs> the death thing runes with the fang, yeah. yeah and i'm i'm and it was never really about what it is it's just the simple fact that like okay, this weapon's insanely powerful it needs to be toned back or else and it wasn't even just about like comparing it to the scythe or the the fang. It was about what's happening with the sail door now. What's happening with the rapier? What's happening with the mace? Like the fang sail is so goddamn good. Love. Sail door needs love. So is rapier. So so, so one one of the things that I had mentioned several months later, uh, just as an idea, was like, what if it had nothing to do with gathering skilling supplies? And this is mainly talking to Iron Man because it's just like, what if it was just charged with GP? Like some sort of system where. It's like the most universal thing and it just has 100,000 charges to it and you just charge it with some GP. Like I know people don't like Chargescape and it doesn't have to be with everything. I'm am, I am against inconvenience scape. I want everything to feel good. I want it to thematically fit to some extent. But yeah. ultimately, if you're going to come out with a super, super, super powerful weapon, it needs to have charges. Like the yeah. And, and uh, I bring up just one more thing and I'll let you go is... Just for the people that are like, nah, like any sort of charging is bad. Like, do you think it would have been healthy or appropriate for the scythe on release to have just been completely free to use? Like, it would. Let me just ask you, I guess, as well, because nobody thinks that that would have been appropriate. If, uh, if you could, if you just get a scythe and it's fully charged, like there is no <laughs> charging thing, it just has all the stats of a charged variant. It's just completely free to use, like from the get go. That would have been so disastrous to like the gear, like the weapon progression. Uh, I, I do. I will say I do like the whole vial of blood system. I like that it it forces you to go back and do that content even post completion to sustain the weapon from that content. That's really nice. I think mm-hmm. that is good design there. But do I think that it didn't need to be blood runes? Uh, I'm just saying it needed to have a cost. Like there, there needed to be some sort of cost to use this. It's the same thing with the blowpipe. Imagine they just had a blowpipe that was just no scales, no darts. You just fucking have this new blowpipe that is the equivalent of dragon dart strength <laughs> and just free to use everywhere. It's like that's just so broken. You've uh, the I, next I'm best like... in slot was a fucking rune crossbow at that time. You can't just come out with a weapon that's so insanely OP and not have any cost associated with it. Like you need that cost. Yeah, I, I, 
I don't mind costs as long as, as like the way of gathering the thing for the thing is enjoyable, as yeah. you said. Yeah. Like this is the thing that I will agree on you agree with you with that uh you mentioned in previous podcasts is the what did you say oh you said i think you like said as we could get like 40k or 60k blood runes an hour doing the same method yeah because i will agree that that would have been a better solve because right now even though it is more convenient to get it it's really hard to get raw gp on an iron anyway so even overall your method still is less time in total to get yeah together around that time actually, of... yeah no i I'll... think the best way you can get even raw gp even at the moment is to just craft blood runes and sell them for raw gp like that's probably equivalent to like even revenants or something for gp right like it's pretty yeah i mean you could probably do vorkath or revenants or just any sort of pvm i mean you could do like fucking whisper at this point just drops 10 dragon plate skirts and stuff is that uh, actually the best raw gp I, I, I don't I, even know I, what is I, the I best no idea but um no, back when the Scar Essence thing, the whole controversy around that, like, pe I feel like I was misunderstood because, you know, people just hear one clip or one, like, sentence that I've said and they'll just make their opinion. But, like, I was not satisfied with where runecrafting was at all. But the solution was not to just have this Scar Essence that shits out 60x your pure essence to rune output just through GP. Like, what the fuck is that? Um, but... You know, people were just like, no, well, this is this is better than what it is now. And I yeah. would argue that it's still not. But that was never my argument. It was just like there are so many healthier ways to go about updating runecrafting. And one of them would just be make runecrafting rewarding and profitable and exciting. And like yeah. so you're doing runecrafting and it feels like, oh, I'm training this skill and I'm getting heavily rewarded with all these runes. And there was so many just so, so simple to just see how you could execute this project but the thing is they just wanted to throw out a band-aid fix really quick and, and everyone just agreed to it and of course but it's the not blog even goes, a complete fix because we we have a limited resource of gp we can have anyway right like it, yeah, but i it, but I it basically like it because fixed it, it is a quick fix and it, it, it helped me a bit but yeah i think we still need some of what you suggested as well like we need yeah we definitely need more bulk runes or something enjoyable to get i don't know yeah. Like how much? How much? How many blood runes can you craft now? Right now, like ten or eleven k or something like that, isn't it? I'm not sure. Without what it is. scar essence. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just like um, I think I have a video. It's like maybe twelve k with everything going for you, like blood essence and going really fast. And and how much does a blood rune sell for? Is like two hundred GP or something? Yeah, as an Iron Man, you could sell them for two hundred. GP. So crafting blood runes is 2.4 mil an hour. Like that's way more like Vorkath is like, so even then there's like no better way to get blood runes. Even if you go for like, raw, it's probably, this is probably equivalent to revs getting the raw GP than buying it as to just making it even right now. Right. Like, yeah, the, I don't know. Yeah. But it's just like for so many people, this whole update was just like people that have a scythe that have been playing in Iron Man for a long time that don't want to do it. They, they don't want to be an Iron Man anymore. Like they want all the yeah. benefits of an Iron Man. They don't want to deal with the chores. That's and kind there, of me. <laughs> there is no, no. And I'm, I'm totally on board with chores should not feel like, sh like hell. Like they, they shouldn't. I am so yeah. against how the current method of farming blood shards is, crystal shards. Like, oh, all these that things. is the one thing that I feel like needs changing the most is blood shards. Like, it's just so bad. Give us it's so bad right give now. Give us yeah. some from Tob. That's kind of thematic. Maybe if you even gave them from Vardorvis, give people a reason to. Like, I think Vardorvis is a pretty, like, actually kind of fun boss. Like, yeah, they, no, if you there's, could farm there's a lot Vardorvis, of that'd be kind of good too. There's a lot of different ways to go about it, but like, just oh, I mean, even if they were to be stuck to thieving. You know, as the fastest way to fix thieving. Like, what the hell is thieving? Look at it objectively. <laughs> like, take a step back and look at this gameplay loop. This is just abominable. You can't even be mad at people from back in the day when they used to use steroid and just force the swap on the buyers. No, as if oh, you want to oh, I didn't. I didn't that. feel bad. I, I I didn't blame anybody for doing it. it just sucked because I. I'm You're not going to risk my account and I'm a content creator. So it's just like, I'm, I can't, I just can't do this. I have to go the traditional way where I'm right clicking every fucking Why elf. would you ever design it so that talk dude, is the masochism. It's people that just devs, <laughs> de like, dude, did you see Sulfur Mine when that shit came out? Zaya released. They came out with a thing called Sulfur Mine. Still in the game. Luckily, Zaya favor got re removed finally, but 
Yeah. Whoever oh, designed that shit out? does not play the game or just is and just wants yeah. everyone to fucking suffer. Like who designed that? Hey, here are these piles of sulfur with clouds fucking you up repeatedly that you can't do anything about. You can't destroy <laughs> them. You can't do anything. Like, And then just mine the shit for like six hours straight. This is before any quest updates I'm, boosted that time. Yeah. I'm pretty sure at the time that came out, uh, my girlfriend at the time, she, uh, I got her into playing the game and she'd done the favor stuff before me. And I'll just like do the sulfur stuff for me. I'm not doing that crap. Dude, that's <laughs> and she so did bad. it for me. And, you are lucky, man. Yeah, I don't, I never fully um, experienced that. No, I, I got I got white graceful before there was even the client of Karend anything like this. There was no speed up. It was just straight up mine sulfur, and uh, yeah, no. also just get saltpeter and whatever the hell I also. God damn it, that's so bad. But like, why would you ever create the like the default option? Like, you talk to them once, they say one phrase of dialogue, and that's all they can ever say. Why do you want to see that again? Like, why is that the default? Like, so how dumb. is that logical at all? Know, like, it's, it's so dumb. And then they became then like dogmatic it about it. it. I know. Just, yeah. Oh my god! The amount of time it just took years for them to finally come to their senses. <laughs> just like I'm just screaming at the top of my lungs on my rambles. Like fuck! Like what is this? Like do you guys play this game? Like <laughs> Jesus Christ! This is horrible. And of course, you you know you have the vast majority of players that are just main accounts that'll never participate in that content. Like you chose to be an Iron Man, like bro, this is just shut the fuck up. Like literally, shut the fuck up. Like you just even it, if you choose it, it doesn't mean it I know it doesn't mean things need to be possible. total aids. I know yeah. it's so annoying. It's like yeah, I'm, I'm totally on board with Funscape. Like make things reasonable, make it fun. This game's a game. Like come on, like you don't need to make things just hellish. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else was... I mean, obviously, I will say, my last skill ever maxing. This is how I fully got into your podcast, and I don't think I'd watched many of your podcasts before it, but I, my last skill for max was mining. Mm. And um, I just... <laughs> I'm not... As, as you know, I'm not a skiller. I hate skilling so yeah. much. Yeah. But you know when it's your last skill to max, hey, you just you just have Grind that push. Like, yeah, you, just, yeah. you have to do it. I think I did like 12 to 15 hours a day of free tick granite and I was just watching a whip <laughs> all of your podcasts on the side while I'm doing the granite. And I had friends like every few hours checking up if I'm still like mentally okay and stuff <laughs> doing the granite. I remember I'd be at like the seven hour or eight hour mark and my wrist would just feel numb and I will just keep pushing on. <laughs> I think I did like 1.5 mil XP and mining a day on granite. Like it was Holy so fuck. bad. That's wild. Like it's, yeah, I don't know. That is something. Uh, I don't know. I don't you've, think you've probably heard by well, this you're not really the guest to talk about this in depth, obviously, because you don't really like skilling. But you've heard of my gnome cube argument. I don't right? think so. That that's just getting rid of um, a, a click from like any sort of tick manipulation with knife log or herb tar. Instead of having oh, to yeah. click twice, yeah. you just would click once. You would just click one item that starts the action. And yeah. then you continue. So it, it it's not like it reduces everything. It. it doesn't reduce everything. And there could also be further changes. I'm I'm totally for, I'll just be brief on this because I know there's listeners that listen to all the cast and just like I've, I've been on this point repeatedly for, you know, like a year at this point about the gnome cube. But it just makes so much sense in my mind. And I just want to keep talking about it because ultimately besides like the weird just kind of flawed arguments in my opinion of like the purists that want this game to stay the same and never adjust anything. It's like, bro, like just take a look at what is being offered from tick manipulatable skills. Like it, the, there's actually some fun to be had, but it comes from the rhythm and the satisfaction of just like clicking in the rock and getting the resource. Like it feels good. Like you can get into this sort of flow and there's, <laughs> there's so much more to it. And it, like, imagine granite, you were making like two mil an hour or something. Like, imagine something where it's like, okay, this is very rewarding. You've gotten rid of a bunch of the bullshit with the clicking. And what if there was even a spell that, like, disintegrates the rocks in your inventory or something? Just something where it's like, you still get so much of the fun out of this skill. And now it's rewarding. <laughs> I, will, I will say there are parts of it that are oddly satisfying. But I will the say... The clicking isn't. The, the intense clicking and the dropping repeatedly, that's not the oh. fun that's the, to be had. That, that shit could be removed or at least... The, like minimized yeah i don't yeah. know but 
I don't know. Like, I think it's fun for like an hour or so. Just it is satisfying. But like, there's risk pain to like, it. Like weird. everyone, uh, like, vast majority of people deal with oh, some yeah. sort of risk discomfort. You can't do that shit repeatedly. So you got to like calm it down. The only thing that's worse is Inferno with the claw and specking, but straight out of blowpipe spec. Oh, yeah, what is that... it? You get blowpipe into claws straight out of it. Like yeah, that's if wild. you do that for a few hours, your wrist. Like I can't even click after like three or four hours. Like I'm just claw scratching but, everything. But it's at so least, but at least that makes sense um, to some extent because it's like, you know, I see Scotty obviously like running his infernos. I watch you. I watch anybody doing those like super high intensity, just inferno runs at this point because the meta has changed so drastically over the years. It's just there's yeah. so much clicking that needs to be done and super precise. But every click means something. That's the oh, difference yeah. with with the gnome cube arguments. Like, there there is nothing happening by you clicking the knife into the log. Like, I understand this is how you manipulate the ticks because this is just how it's always been. But yeah. this is this has been globalized. Like, everyone does this and recognizes this as tick manipulation. So why not just simplify it? Get rid of the yeah, unnecessary right. click. Like, imagine just to click a blowpipe, you had to click two things. You had to click like your hand like imagine there was like a fucking hand icon in your inventory now you have to click the hand and then the blowpipe just to equip the blowpipe like god damn it like just get rid of that first yeah that's not taking from the overall method it's still the same thing it's just making it slightly more convenient like slightly less aids like it's not getting and it's not getting rid of any of the actual fun that can potentially be had i'm not claiming everyone's if you find it fun yeah yeah (laughs) it's not getting rid of anything that's valuable to the actual method itself yeah 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 but i will say i don't think that compares to the amount of uh tear to your wrist that inferno does but it's still definitely if you do that for seven or eight hours you definitely are gonna feel it and then you just push on and then the numbness just it just goes away the it feels like you don't have a hand developing. anymore yeah yeah <laughs> uh, yeah i don't know I, yeah, I was... I, I, i've never done uh super you know speed run super long sessions well, infernos I'm talking about because I I understand that the APMs is going to be a super super. You high. would love it. You would love it. I reckon. I probably I think so- anybody could love it, but you have to have the desire to like start. Basically, you have to want to do it. And I don't think I was ever as passionate as you or any other person that's running inferno speeds to get yeah. into that. It it definitely takes a ridiculous amount of willpower to be able to get into it. I feel like like you have to. You have to want it. You have to want to be good at the, at the content. Yeah, like, I don't see it as, oh, I died. Like, I see each death as a lesson. And, like, if I did a few good solves in that run, then I'm sa- then I'm satisfied. Like, it's, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, that's, I guess you have to have a different mentality, a different way of viewing it to succeed in it, I feel like. Like, when I started, I remember streaming it. I, I think I've told you this story before, but, you know, like, Shawnee. Yep. You've probably heard of Shawnee before. I remember him coming to my chat. I think my PB was like sub 60 or something at the time. And I first like was trying to get into it. It's like one of my first ever speed runs. And I finally decided to like stream it and stuff. And I'm like looking for advice from people who know what they're doing. And I asked Shawnee, um, what do you think about my run? What should I do better? And he goes, there's too much to say. I can't comment. That's what he said. <laughs> too, you're doing too much wrong. Oh my God. And then I'm getting like Hemi's in call, like flaming me for every little, little thing I'm doing. I feel like you need... I don't know. I feel like in this game, as much as it's criticized, like flaming people for not knowing what they're doing, I think like getting flamed does help you improve a bit. I don't know. It's just, it's, just, it's like, I'll show you. I don't know. It's kind of. Yeah, no, straight up. It's... Yeah, and no. I. I don't know. I watched Adwam back in the day. He was probably Adwam, Exact, um, Absal, some of my top inspirations i feel like getting into it going from like a casual inferno caper to like speed runner slash i was getting into like set stack and stuff as well i don't know if yep. you've seen like the low level stuff that absal does yeah he's like wild a, yeah like i learned those methods but i learned like the kirby way of doing it and absal was like learn my way of doing it it's superior and stuff and i don't know i was trying to it's pretty satisfying to like stack all seven eight mages up depending if it's pre-jad or post-jad and like same tick them like mm. I don't know if you've seen like Kirby's spreadsheet and you have to like, you, you wouldn't know how much actually went into like that exact low level cape unless like you saw like the theory behind it as well. Like they've got everything lined up from like 
the tick that Zuck like starts on, like the whole like instant starts on, and then like what tick the mage and range that spawn under the other one relative to Zuck, relative to where you are, like when you can immediately target depending on how many ticks have passed from the start of the Zuck fight. Like they're looking at everything from so the beginning. Wild. So, so like basically wild. every odd set you can insta target if it's within close range because it's already lined up that that major underneath will be same tick from that distance, from that chin, from that position, from that... Sp- like, they've got so much calculated. Like, it's crazy to... Like, I-, I feel like you can't fully appreciate it unless you, like, see all of the theory behind it. It's it's crazy. No, you really so, can't. You, I, I mean, yeah. I can't even fully appreciate... I mean, I can't fully appreciate even something... This is definitely not as much theory involved at all. Like, this is just pure mechanical ability, but you see, like noob type doing 27 awakened leviathans in one inventory oh like what yeah. the literal fuck like i i, I mean he's i know he's- i i know that's like just a massively impressive i just can't i can barely grasp onto how much concentration and how much skill that takes i mean that is just wild he he's insane i, ca- I can't he plays like full screen as well and his clicks are so accurate it's insane i can't he's, he's, he's crazy so- He's so good. But it's, He's a, like, it's the same thing with, I mean, even you, I mean, there's a lot, when you dedicate yourself to the Inferno, I mean, watching, watching you, watching Scotty, watching Adam, watching Adicon, watching any of these people just running Inferno, it's just, you make it look like a cakewalk. It's like, okay, this, you know, you're watching and you're like, oh, okay, like oh, I could probably jump into the Inferno and do just something similar to this or just like, you know, like shittier, <laughs> but I could. I could, you know, somehow manage. And it's just like, holy yeah. fuck, everything's getting out of And then of you control. go in and you're like, oh, well, this isn't what I was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, <laughs> and you and you can even see it with somebody that's just moderately good at the Inferno. You switch to that stream of somebody learning Inferno speeds or something. You're like, holy fuck. You just watch them and you're like, this is so much more of a headache than I realized. Like, just yeah. watching somebody that doesn't know as much and is not as good. If you even look at like the difference between someone's play from like a sub fifty compared to like a sub forty five or like a sub forty three, yep. it's actually insane. Like how much more like smooth they are and how much more how just developed their souls are and how comfortable they feel just knowing exactly what to do in yeah. every situation. It's it's really cool. It's actually like I'm glad the game like just going back to what we were talking about like just the game's progression and like we're satisfied with where the game's at right now. It's like that is one of the coolest things about our era of this game is you just have absolute mechanical wizards and just beasts of this game that take it so far and it's so it's so much fun to watch people that are so good at this that's what i'm saying now like back in like 2016 we looked up to wooks like this guy is insane like he's clearly like the best Mm -hmm. i feel like the average player now is probably what Wooks was in 2016, if not more, which is insane. Like the average skill level is increased. I don't know about so average. I don't know about average, but I would say mm-hmm. like the people that do a lot of high level PVM repeatedly. Are... Yeah, but the, there's the a high different... level community. It feels like nearly everyone is like Wooks or better. From yeah, I mean, well, if if you were to if you were to just teleport 2016 Wooks today, he just he would have to he would have to learn a lot. Like he'd have to yeah, just like holy fuck, like what is all this content that's come out? But no. oh, if he didn't fall behind and like actually do real life stuff, then he would probably still be the best or close to the best. But it's it's just, it's, it's, it's just hard to know because like at, at that point, like Wooks. Everyone was younger. Wooks had a massive giga, giga galaxy brain and he pioneered yeah. shit and he still got things done first. Like he would get things done first. That's and, where his talent comes is like oh just yeah. solving. Like immediately just solve being things. able to like work out what is good in content. I, I feel like yep. tweak to slash. Yep. He, you know he, the quote? He, we, what? What was that from? Oh, you haven't seen the clip when he discovers that Verzik's weak to slash. Oh, yeah. Like, he's weak he's to just, slash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Just so it, he's like T-bowing Verzik, right? That yeah, it? that was yeah. that was funny to watch him, like getting everyone to wear like the beak helmet and T-bow and max range and everyone. Fucking awesome. Yeah. I, I want that. I hope, I really hope that Coliseum is something like that again. I really hope. I mean, I feel like it's impossible. We always say this. It's impossible to get that same level of challenge because everyone's so good now, but it would be so nice to just to see that stream hopping, everyone trying to like defeat the Coliseum kind of feel we got with Tobin and Inferno. Like if we can have that just, just once more, I don't think they realize how 
yeah, it doesn't cater for like the average player or whatever, but it gets it still draws a lot of new players to the game because they look at that and they aspire to be that. Like it's like that's what I want to be like. Don't you reckon? Like yeah, but like yeah, the game was more active than ever when um it, when Inferno and Tob came out, and it's well, on and it's their... not because people could do it; it's because they have goals. Yeah, but on on their end, they're looking at like actual, uh, you know, playability. Like who who is interacting with this content so there's just so much on their end they're probably they probably you know just weren't making as i mean obvious it's it's obvious that tob was so much more prestigious and had so much more hype behind it than toa but clearly toa on their end was a much more massive of, of a success you just had so many people interacting with yeah. the content so many people just it was and so that's what jagex sees now and honestly you just I get jaded and any sort of high level players pretty jaded I would imagine of just thinking of what the average player is really like. I mean so we just have to just I mean remember when you were learning chambers. I mean you're fucking just a total noob. I mean and you had already gotten an infernal cape, you know, think about that. And so you just have like the average player that's just doesn't have much time to play, doesn't doesn't have a ability to just TOA play was actually people. kind of fun on release, not even going to lie. I no, think TOA that, that is fun take, content. But... It is fun. It's just yeah. not I mean, my, there's certain my aspects of it that I, I think on release it was, I mean, it's nothing like Tom release or anything like that, but I still feel like on release, I don't know, when those wardens came out and you got like teleported to the third phase, I was like freaking out. I was like, what is going on? It's like a rocket ship taking off or something. I, like, <laughs> I was freaking out. Like, I'm going to die. I don't know. It was just, and this was me doing like a 150 or something. I was freaking out. Yeah, doing was, a 300 was wild. I have a video they, still on my YouTube of me doing my first 300, like within the first week or whatever. I had no idea what I was doing. So just like the whole thing looks like a shit show. And I just remember I would still get like commenters funneling in months later. And they're like, bro, you suck. Like you suck at this. Because it's like everything had already been solved at that point. Like I made this shit like the first week. Like, I had no, I like I was literally just camped like on like the first phase of Wardens. I just kept taking the red balls because I didn't even know what that mechanic was. Like I just, I just ate red balls the entire time. I just had no idea. Wait, what? You just like let the them little? Hit you? Yeah, I, I, I didn't understand the mechanic of the pillar in the middle shooting out two sides of red balls. Oh, like, like so I just ate them like the entire way through, and I'd get commenters like, "What the <laughs> fuck are you doing, you idiot?" Like I was like, when "I don't first, know." When you first went into TOA, did you even? I didn't even. I'm sure this happened to you. You didn't even know to tank those. Then all the things come down from the ceiling and you just die. I'm sure that happened to everyone. Oh, dude. I, I had that happen even months later. <laughs> just like I would just forget to like eat any red balls. And I'm like, oh, well, now I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think they put the most troll default settings possible on though. On, like it had like walk the path and stuff on like a 150. Oh, yeah. When and they, that was back when walk the path was just brutal. Or it, yeah, it was the I same, remember, but it was just like worth nothing. Yeah. Or maybe it was more But that brutal. was the default when yeah, DOA yeah, came yeah, out. Like yeah, it was put as like a 150 in that. So and then I had, I had Zabak just doing it like super fast chomping to me on like level four. <laughs> my first ever raid. I'm like, what the heck? This is actually hard. Like, this thing yapping like crazy. This was not a 150. And I thought like 150 was hard. I was yeah. like, holy shit. Yeah, this is funny. Zandy asks, do you think that Coliseum <laughs> update will be harder than Inferno and or hope that it is harder? Oh, of course I hope that it's harder. I hope that everything's harder. I always want someone to have something harder to strive for, I feel like. it's all, Even if I can't immediately do it, I feel like it's always good to have goals and it's hard to have something that takes more than a day to complete in this day and age. So mm -hmm. I, I just want more content that feels reactive in the moment. Like there's nothing that really compares to Inferno because there's nothing that like you have to think within a, a half a second and if you don't, you're going to get punished. That's what Inferno is. Like you have to think up your whole game plan in a split second and if you don't, because nothing else is really like ran, like as random as Inferno in the game. It's all like linear kind of stuff. Like Tob, maybe it's a bit random if a Nilo doesn't die and you have to target like a different one, maybe it'll change your whole rotation a bit. Mm -hmm. But Inferno, one Nibbler goes one way, even if it's the same spawn that you're used to, you're going to have to path differently, kill that in a way that you don't lose ticks and drag stuff closer in a dip. Like even there's so many different combinations of souls that you already know that exist, oh, that exist as well. 
I'm and, keeping uh, that in here, by the way. I'm keeping it in. Uh, that's fine. I think I watched the Condor one the other day, and he did a few of those. So yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was expected. We weren't expecting this one from you, but Come on. No. Yeah, that's true. I'm usually a gentleman. What is this? What am I doing with this? <laughs> But yeah, I'm really hoping for a lot of reactivity in it. And I know that it is going to be wave-based, right? So I think there's a high chance that it will be similar to Inferno in that aspect. Well, I'm really hoping that it is. Yeah. In fact, that is a lot of the skill of Inferno is the fact that you... Yeah, it's there's nothing like it. Like, there's nothing that you have to think that fast for, right? I don't know. There's nothing else. I don't know. I'm I'm just excited for months down the line where people are like forming the perfect meta for speed running it that's gonna be exciting yeah i don't know what your predictions are for what's going to be useful for coliseum but my prediction is on the dins and the venator bow it's going to be one or both the two i reckon you look at the middle of the arena nine by nine you can hit almost everything in there with a dins ball i expect so mm. and do you remember when they proposed tob how they said someone's going to be holding like tank gear. They're going to be carrying a key to the other side of the room and they never actually implemented that tank mechanic. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just all about offensive gear in top now. I think maybe they'll revisit that. So it's either going to be AOE hits in the arena, which is going to be useful for the DIN spec, or maybe they'll actually finally make use of a tank mechanic. So I think there's two reasons for that potentially being useful. So my money's on the DIN if I had to guess. I don't know about you. I mean, I know there was a meme and just fabricated, but Spectral might actually have some use. We'll see. I, I really hope it does. Yeah. I'm I'm really disappointed that Spectral doesn't work with the Karis spec or it doesn't work with like poking with Karis and tear away. Or These are perfect examples of great places to have it used. And yeah. it's just, they never That was I their mean, one chance and I they know. still just even even Barrows, like just Barrows has a prayer drain when you go down. Why not wear a spectral? If you do have it, obviously yeah. nobody's doing Barrows with a spectral, but like I, I would if I had a, I mean, back, this is years ago before there was such thing as a fucking shadow and just insane DPS where you're just two-shotting everything. But um, yeah, just like that would have been nice. I'm biased though because that's the only spiritual I have in my eye. But <laughs> still, it needs some love anyway. Like it's, yep. I mean, that was But I also for... really hope that, I also think, you know how I said AOE is going to be big, like DIN spec and, oh, I mean, multi-target hits, not AOE specifically, but like Mm -hmm. multi-strike hits is going to be big, like Chinsborough. I think that's even more the case because I think they want to make a case for Virtus more over Ancestral. So they'll want to, and I mean, if you're going to have to be brewing a lot, then I think Shadow is going to finally not see a super huge use in Colosseum. It might be all about wearing full Virtus and barraging things, maybe as well, I think. It's another thing that I'm thinking. Yeah, well, I, I think, hope that gets some love because I, it's all about thralls and DPS camping. I think the ancient spellbook needs some more love again as well. I I think it's gonna mostly be range and melee based. That's my um, that's what I'm imagining, but who knows? But it would be nice to see like barrage actually be useful again. I don't know. Thralls yeah. just feel super dominant right now, and it's yeah. So, yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. To answer the question, I do very much hope that it's harder than Inferno. Of course, I think most people would hope for that, right? I think they said that there was ten waves, and the first eight are like similar level to Inferno. Then it gets harder than Inferno. I think. What, yeah, it's like eight waves or something. Difference. Like the next like four are going to be like harder. Oh, so. it's twelve waves in total. Yeah, something like that. I literally, I've been confused about this for months. I, I at first I thought it was endless. I thought this was like some endless thing where you just keep keep going. I don't know if that's has any element of endlessness with it. But that uh, literally that was like just like stuck in my mind for months. So I've just been kind of I don't know. I haven't followed the Coliseum as as tightly as I probably w- would have liked to. Uh, so I'm kind of just yeah. going in with like. I mean, I mean, I think it's just 12 waves, but for some reason, for so long, I had thought it was going to be like an endless thing where you're getting like more and more and more and more glory the more you go up or whatever. I don't know. So, Does glory charge the quiver? Is that how it works? I don't I remember. Can, I think I it's something remember. like that. I think I think it's the echo shards, right? Or or it's the echo shards only charging those boots. I can't find I've that. read hardly ever any of like the updates in like the last few months. Yeah. I don't know if they've changed anything, but... Uh, yeah, well... I- yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't be. <laughs> I should know this at this point, mm-hmm. but it's just like the amount of just rumors that are still fluttering around in my head about the the, the Coliseum for years is just. I, I just have so much like 
things that aren't based in like what's actually coming out. So we'll just figure it out when it comes out. How about that? Yeah, but the quiver's the end result, right? Like you beat the final boss and you get the quiver. It, yeah, I think, I think so. It, I believe so. I think that's the final thing you get. That's actually that's kind of cool. It's gonna. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It should, I mean, it should be harder than the as hell. Quiver is powerful. Yeah, plus, I mean, just to put into perspective, what is Masori legs like? Plus twenty six, I think. Range accuracy. The quiver's a backpack slot, and it's plus twenty seven. It's more than a whole chaps for <laughs> best in slot for a backpack slot. That's insane. Is it plus twenty eight or is it twenty seven? I think it's either twenty seven or twenty eight. I'm not sure. It's wild. Maybe maybe it is twenty eight. Yeah. Because I, I think they're not getting the blue than, part. It's twenty more than the assembler, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It probably is twenty eight then. I think you're right. But I think they're not adding it to blowpipe because they don't want blowpipe to be super good again. I Wait, what? They're not adding it to... What does that even mean? I think they're making that 20 extra accuracy apply to every range weapon except for blowpipe. I think what that's the fuck? That was the whole yeah. reason I wanted it. I know. <laughs> it sucks. Are you serious? Is that just a rumor? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Oh my that's what, god. That's, that's what I've heard. I don't know stupidest if fucking thing I've ever heard. Why do they need to make these specific niche cases all the time? It's Why so can't you just, just give the buff all around? What's going on? I and wanna, give us yeah. give us your idea already give us the full inquisitor warhammer always i'm gonna say that again i approve of this idea and i want everyone else to we're gonna yeah, get I've on to this why has this not happened yet saying this for a long ass time <laughs> you full, said this like every podcast but we gotta, we gotta make inqui- this happen full inquisitors guarantees a warhammer spec just fucking do it already this, this is the dumbest thing to me i think fasani's it's not hard content but i think fasani's is harder content than next so why is why is it like nowhere near as good as Tor? Like, what? Shouldn't the armor be at least close to as good from content that's like more difficult? Like, yep. like what? It's so and dumb. it's more enjoyable too. It's I more know. enjoyable and more difficult, and it's weaker. It's like why? I don't know. I could talk about this for hours of just about like just everything that's wrong with Fasani's, like the the armor, the drop rates, the oh, the there's so rate. many things. Drop I already told you right now. I'm 1300 with one orb. Yeah, that like, is that so is... dumb. <laughs> yeah. That's I mean, so... I got full Inquisitor at 170 KC, but now I'm going, so I can't really complain, but that dry yeah. streak is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just dumb. Um, so, yeah, that whole play, like, just every, it needs to be looked at, and things just don't get looked at for years and years and years and years and years. It's like, come on, just. Yeah. So. Definitely Inquisitor. Inquisitor has no use in the game anymore. Even, like, the mace, you don't even use it on Tecton anymore. You Scyther now, like, it's like. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Well, and then they, they, because they thought the little band aid fix of just guaranteeing a Warhammer with nothing on is just totally fine. Like, if it, if it required the Inquisitors, you'd be way more like that would it just. And then a, you hit both guaranteed too. That's so nice. Yeah, that would have been amazing. And it would have actually made that armor very valuable. Yeah. And why is the Great Helm, the Inquisitor's Great Helm, plus four strength? Like the Torva no, is plus know. eight. Like, eight, yeah. What the fuck is going on here? Like Jesus. Give the whole set effect like a a bigger buff or something. Maybe yeah, it's it, two like, point five or seven. Two point five percent. Like what the hell That's is that? Like so negligible. Like it sometimes doesn't even make a difference at all. Th- then I'm you have sure something like Osmonton's like like Fang that has one hundred percent extra. Like what? So two point five percent, and then you're just giving a weapon a hundred percent extra. Like the- yeah. Definitely, Fasani's needs to be. T- I, I know they're doing like the spell weakness stuff soon and making stuff weak to elemental spells, so harm. Yeah, we'll might s- be good there. I'm excited for that. We'll see what happens. I hope so because I have the harm. That's the orb that I got in the eight <laughs> hundred. So I'm, I'm for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know though. Definitely, they have to touch on Fasani again this year. There's no way they don't. They have I don't to. Know. I think they are going to. I think that's kind of their plan in Project Rebalance. Hopefully, some things get changed. Yeah, I think I did hear them mention it in one of the one of their latest streams. Maybe I don't know, but yeah. Okay. So that, this is, that is my take on it. This is a slightly different uh, non RuneScape topic from Hemi's. How was your experience on Australia's Ninja Warrior? And um, would you sign up again if you had the opportunity? So this is obviously the picture that's on the thumbnail. Looks like you're doing the Ninja Warrior right there, look, looking god tier with the balance. Oh. The amount of like weight that I lost to go on that, I don't know how. Look how ridiculously skinny I look in that picture. I, yeah. think I weighed like sixty three or sixty five kilos or something. Like it was I, don't, I don't know what that insane. is. What's what, what's that in a freedom unit? All right, let me just convert that to yeah. freedom units right now. I'm guessing I like one thirty five, maybe one thirty five pounds. I don't know how tall you are though. Yeah, one forty three. 
Okay, one. I'm 182 point. centimeters tall. How you convert that? To, <laughs> you're already on the converter. Okay. 182 centimeters to feet. It's. Uh. It's five eleven point six six. Okay, so okay, yeah, you're about an inch taller than me. Yeah. Damn, so and you were only 143. That's... Sheesh, that's really skinny. That would be like me being like 136. Jesus. Yeah, but to get onto that, like, I was ridiculously, like, like, I was going to, like, a random, like, training gym with, like, obstacles on it and stuff. Like, I was just doing chin-ups in my garage, got, like a monkey bar set up in my garage and stuff. I think I'd do, like, 37 chin-ups in a row at the time. I don't know how many. It was <laughs> Holy... insane. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. Like without do, stopping? You know how people do, yeah, 37 in a row. Like, 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 like without, like, <laughs> wow, that that's wild, bro. That's a lot. Yeah. And, um, what else could I do? You know how people do one arm chin ups and they, like, use one arm to pull up their other arm? They're like, oh, I did a one arm chin up. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, not yeah. a one arm chin up. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah. a dead hang with one arm and pull yourself up with one yeah, arm. Yeah. I could do, I think, it was either three or four of just dead hang one arm chin ups, which was. That's, I don't know, that was pretty insane as well, I feel like. Were you able to do muscle-ups? Yeah, I could do 13 muscle-ups, so that was pretty you good you do well. one-handed muscle-ups? That, that's when you're... Nah, really, nah yeah, you can't wild. balance as you do that. Wild. I think I've seen somebody on, like, a reel doing that shit. But, yeah, to get onto that show, there was, I think, 13,000 applicants, and the top 300 got chosen to go on the show. So I was pretty lucky to even be able to go on the show. You had to do, like, a physical test get interviewed and stuff as well afterwards. And the physical test was so brutal. Like you're in like this garage and they're like testing, like how far you can jump, how, how many like chin ups you can do, how long you can like hold yourself, dead hang, stuff like that. Wow. And you've got all the other people competing against you. And it's like, when you're hanging there next to everyone else, you just do not want to be the first person to come <laughs> off. Like you're <laughs> suffering so much. You're all just looking, you are just, <laughs> it's like you're fighting for your life. It's like, yeah. and, I Holy almost shit. threw up after and I couldn't even open the door after I left like the <laughs> testing thing because my Holy arm was just, like my arm was just dead because <laughs> you, like you, you've come so far you're not gonna let anything stop you like you're gonna hold on until you you're gonna die right like, yeah. I don't know damn that's crazy so yeah how was uh, the whole the whole experience was it, was it fun like what what does the live audience look like because there's a live audience right there right right kind of cheering yeah it is it is I mean it's scary to be honest yeah. it's pretty it's pretty intimidating. It was really annoying because I don't know if you've... Have you ever watched Ninja Warrior before? Yeah. Yeah, I used to watch it like a decade ago, so... Have you heard of The Shrinking Steps? Uh, yeah, it's like explain a... It. It's one where you like run across all these stepping stone things. And they like fall or something when you step on them or something? They don't fall, but they're like squidgy kind of things above the water. And they're like little small things you have to like run across. Okay. And they like get there and... So I trained all this upper body stuff. Like I'm good at all that. And I'm just like, as long as I get past the leg obstacle, I'm good. And then I do the shrinking steps and then I crack it. And then I just, so I get across all the shrinking steps. I grab the rope, swing across it. And then my toe just skims the water like the slightest bit. And then, that you know how you? like all the red, yeah. And all the red lights go up when my oh toe my just touches. God. That slightly. is so dumb. All that training and my toe slightly touches. And then I'm like, okay, how do I still make a scene for myself? How do I make it look like I, I don't know, like I still know what I'm doing. So I yeah. do a backflip back into the water. And then when I do the backflip, I land back on one of the shrinking steps. And that like cuts my knee open. And I'm just like bleeding. <laughs> oh, no. and they, yeah. And then they go to like interview me afterwards. And then they see that my whole leg is just gushing out of blood. And they have to escort <laughs> me off like mid interview. <laughs> so it was kind of a messed up situation. <laughs> But it doesn't run in Australia anymore, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, they probably canceled know. it. God but damn if it! it uh, if it were to run again, I mean, so you, so you cool. you're 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 pretty confident you could have completed the whole thing pretty fast. Um, oh, if it if wasn't I, for, oh, easily because you got past that, the yeah. one part that was the challenge, and then you're just yeah, everything else I'd practiced. Yeah, <laughs> but you can't really <laughs> do a backflip, slice your knee open. Jesus, Christ. oh, I was worst. pissed. I was oh. <laughs> <laughs> everything's yeah, going wrong yeah so anything to just have another shot at it of course i would go back yeah. if i had but it's it's actually a kind of it's an exhausting day because you get up there you so they expect you to be there early in the morning because i want to like take pictures of you like posing in specific ways to and like interview you for like you know how they like tell your story like what do you do with yourself yeah, like yeah, you yeah. have like 
I had like a Pokemon backstory about like me playing competitive Pokemon and stuff. And I like wore a Pikachu suit and stuff like mm. that. So I had to be there, I think like seven or eight in the morning. And this was, I had to travel probably two hours to get there too. So I probably had to wake up at like five in the morning or something. And then my actual run was at like one o'clock in the morning the next day. And I'd already stayed up the whole day. Oh doing, my like, God. So I'm just so, I think I had like five coffees or something that day. Like it's, Jesus, that's rude, brutal. I feel like that probably might have affected my precision as well. Maybe that's part of the reason my toes. Totally, that has to be part of the careful. reason. You're not even fully recovered. Jeez. Yeah. So besides that, I, I don't know. Yeah, I want to. I want to get. It was really weird as well. You know how I said I did like that, like strenuous kind of physical test and stuff. I had mm-hmm. um, one of one of my music teachers from in high school was randomly doing the test with me that I hadn't seen for like ten years, and he was in the. It was oh, in wow. the like actual yeah. I was like, "What the hell are you doing here?" And it was just it was crazy to like see one of my old teachers like trying to get on the show. Yeah, that's cool. So, what what was yeah. the if you would have like gone far and stuff like was there like a cash reward? Like how did that all work? If you would have, I think it's like a hundred. It depends. It builds up if people hadn't won the previous year. I think it was at like three hundred thousand or something like that. So, wow. Yeah, you, but that there were people that huge, were yeah. like pretty crazy. Do you think you had a, a chance at that? Mm, or, or, maybe uh, i mean there's obviously people who were better than me but yeah. i would have a shot at it like i mean i grew up doing gymnastics i got i didn't get like super i don't know if you know the levels in gymnastics but level 10 is olympic level i was level eight so wow. i was bad. decently good at gymnastics like i can i can do most of the stuff that i can do like a triple backflip i can do a triple twist i can do yeah i can do a lot of cool moves i suppose i mean i'm not the best but and i got pretty good upper body strength too from my gymnastics background but i mean obviously there's some absolute beasts on the show so it's I so maybe i'll be top 20 or 30 maybe yeah i don't like, know like i'll be i'll be humble here <laughs> so like theoretically if it were if there were to be a, a, a thing similar to that in the future like do you think you could get in the shape that you would need to be like relatively quickly like how like how how much how much work would that take to get back to that like physique you need well i'm 78 kg at the moment i'll convert that to freedom <laughs> units for you thank you <laughs> what is that 78 kg to pound i am 171 at the moment okay so i could get back down to that in probably maybe like three or four months i reckon like if i committed myself to it probably but i mean i don't think i ever want to be that skinny again like it yeah, is yeah that sounds miserable it is I remember like I'd be invited out to like some bar or whatever with my friends and then like the air con would be on or like I'd be sitting on the chair that's like slightly pointy and like I could it's like my pelvis there's like no fat between my pelvis and the seat and it would just it would just destroy me like you just die just sitting on a chair and like the cold you'd have to like leave the bar after like 20 minutes because you just freeze to death <laughs> like you look you look crazy good like I don't know yep. if you can I don't know if you have that image of me that I showed yeah you yeah in the past if, if maybe you, you can bring that up on the street yeah 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 pull, pull it up I, uh, we'll, we'll show oh. people do we have it still i don't know if i can immediately find it let me see if well, i can let's see if you can but no i mean i i mean when i was a senior in high school that was my leanest i ever was because i just i finally started understanding nutrition i finally started understanding exercise i finally started understanding these things and i wanted to get lean but i obviously i wasn't doing it the appropriate way like i had a, a relatively like just for being you know a 17 year old had all right muscle mass like tiny tiny amounts but enough to like if i would have cut which i did i I looked relatively good for being a kid but um and not having like actually gone to a gym just doing like basic calisthenics but i do remember times where like i'd be in the car and everyone's totally fine temperature and i'm sitting there fucking freezing so it's just so lean (laughs) And, and if you I, go on the ocean too, like I oh, live really close to the ocean, it's like it, you'll last a minute. Like, oh, that'd be max. so bad. Yeah. No, I mean, I just remember like always being cold. I'd always be craving something. It's just permanently craving something. I'd want a donut or I'd, I'd want multiple donuts. I'd want pizza. I'd want anything. So just this constant sort of feeling of like I, I want something, but I was so dedicated to just being lean i was in lacrosse i wanted to do all these things so but i just remember that and i was probably like 140 pounds maybe like 138 at my lowest yeah that is 
I mean, that's similar to what I got to. But I didn't have as much muscle mass as you. I mean, I was, again, like this just barely getting into I'm, it. I was you know, pretty skinny. I definitely lost, like, okay, I've been through a fat phase before, like where mm. I got like mega, I think when I first started streaming, I weighed 98 kg, which okay. is, let me let me see what that is. Probably close to 200, right? It or is more, more 216. Jesus. Yeah, I weighed that for a bit. And, um, but I was really strong back then. Like I, mm. I don't know if you know much about like bench press. I don't know if you've yeah, done yeah. much like lifting and stuff. Yeah, no, I've I I actually could, in, in college. Well, let me know what your max was, and I'll tell you what mine was. I could do 130 kilos for three reps at the what, time. What's which, that? What's 130? That is like 280, 290. Uh, 286. So yeah, I I was able to do uh 260. Um, that was my max. I could I could almost do it twice. There's I, I still have a video saved. I'll yeah, find you, somewhere. But were you pretty bulky back then too? Were no, pretty, I was like, I was only I was only like 155 pounds. Like 100. That's crazy to do pounds. that weight at that amount. But I've I've always had like a like body wise like my biceps struggle to get big, but my chest has always just been like the easiest kind of body part for me to train. Oh. So I've never had problems with bench press. I just so yeah yeah i went pretty crazy in college like just for how small i was yeah either way when i got up to that amount and i was benching that much and yeah i was was also doing dips with 60 kilos hanging off my legs too for eight reps which was insane i I don't know i wonder now yeah um yeah well i've never actually done weighted dips because i just don't have the equipment for it i don't want to fucking hurt myself and my dips yeah, that, bar doesn't allow things to be like hanging from me because I just I use this basic equipment. I could go out to the park technically and bring some weights, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah, so I was doing 130 pound off the legs for eight reps of dips, which was insane. <laughs> That's I feel crazy, like yeah. Yeah, like all the way down, full motion. But then after I like had COVID, like when I was training for Ninja Warrior, that was like during COVID and stuff. And like I didn't realize how much strength I lost, like losing that much fat. I went to the gym and I was struggling with like 60 kilo bench. I was like, this is not okay. Like, I feel like this is, this is not okay. Like a fully grown guy. I can't even, like, this is, nah. And that's why I've like bulked up in the last year again. Cause I'm like, I, I don't like, yeah, it looks good, but you look strong. Like you look athletic, but you, you're, you, weak. you're weak. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. No, that's what you kind know. of, it's, it's funny. Cause I mean, just in regards to that, like I, I always like, I'll look at myself in the mirror because, you know, I'm in I'm relatively healthy. I, um, I'm i not, like, super lean or anything. I'm just kind of, like, on that kind of moderate sort of bulk. It's just all calisthenics. It's just, like, mostly just for my own health. I, I'm not, like, doing it for super vain reasons at all. But uh, Yeah, I saw you posting some topless photos, photos the other day. And I was like, damn, Sabe is looking pretty good. The other day? <laughs> I mean, when was that? Oh, not the other day. It was probably a few months ago. Oh, the, was, it was it from the stream or was it from... Oh, was it from it might have been. Yeah, yeah. I think it yeah. was when you like went topless on stream ones. <laughs> yeah, no, that that that's the nice thing about initially bulking. Cause when when you're lean, because I would I got um, you know, I, I tried to lose like several pounds right before I went to TwitchCon Las Vegas. And I was already like relatively lean, so I just I cut maybe like five pounds before I went there, so I was like leaner and it felt felt good. But then as soon as TwitchCon ended, I just started just kind of eating whatever the hell I want. And the first couple yeah. months of doing that, you just look tight. Like you look like good because you don't have like any like loose sort of fat. It's like all like the just kind of like beginning fat. So you just look fucking bulky. Like it looks, so, yeah. it's just, it's a great, it's a great feeling. That uh, is the best look as well if you're not topless, I feel like too. Like just oh, with yeah. your arms totally. and your chest are like sticking out of your tight shirt. <laughs> totally. Like yeah, it's the best. Yeah. Um, I always want to get bigger because, you know, I'll look at myself just in comparison to just myself, like just in the mirror. I'm like, okay, I like, I, I'm, I'm satisfied with how I look. Like this is really nice. It's, nice knowing you can just do daily exercises and just actually get a pretty good physique i think that's something for a lot of people that don't go to the gym or haven't really dedicated themselves to any sort of exercise routine in their life like it is so easy like not easy it's just simple it's so simple it's just do daily stuff push yourself to failure occasionally and eat enough protein and just like and eat enough calories and you're like you're just on your way to looking like a having a great physique um and obviously that's had, just, uh, assuming you're smaller but yeah i had a completely shredded like six pack when i was like 15 years old in high school and it was just from all i did was before i went to bed each night for like 15 minutes i would just do like an ab workout and push-ups on the floor before i went yep. to bed every yep. night and that's it 
that's all it took. That's I know. Literally all I had to do, yeah. Dude, I mean, that's literally all I've been doing for the past like year and a half is like, I'll just do dips, lunges, squats, push ups, and like some. I mean, I barely started doing like actual like isolated dumbbell movements like with my for my biceps because they've just always remained kind of small. But it's like fucking all you need, and then I'll just go out for a bike with ride legs. or walk. That's me with legs. I'm fortunate. I got pretty good biceps, pretty good chest, pretty good back genetics. But then my legs, I'll work them, and they're still too thick. So I, I got unfortunate there. I feel like wait, they're uh, they're what? They're still small? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. My yeah, legs no, I, don't I, grow I very well. I mean, if I wanted to get my legs bulky, that requires, like, actually squatting weight, like, putting a fuck ton of weight on and actually, like, progressively overloading and, like, increasing that amount every week. Yeah. And I, I hate, I, like, that it's so, because I don't have naturally, like, Because you know muscle. the next day it's going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but the thing is, like, lunges, even, like, weighted lunges, just, like, with, like, 20 pounds on each side, doing, like, lunges here and there, or just even squats. Like, I'll have days on stream where, you know, somebody... Give me twenty subs. I'll do a hundred squats. Like I actually did, like wouldn't even better like, do a hundred. I did like I did like, I did like I did like four hundred fifty squats one day. Jesus fucking Christ! Over the next week, I was just just absolutely just horribly sore. But um, I mean that alone, like you'll get a good decent pump. My legs will look fine, like proportionally. They, have you seen Prison yeah. Joe on Twitter? His yeah, his legs, legs are insane. Yeah, he doesn't have his he doesn't have his um top his biceps visible though, so I can't see if it's in proportion. But his quads are insane. Yeah, like, that is crazy. That he's just like beefy. Yeah. I mean, he's a beefy. Hey, he's leaning out though. He looks great. Um, Wasn't he a previous like cop or something? Yeah, know. yeah. He was in the government uh, criminal whatever. I, I don't know yeah. the exact thing, but he was also uh, he played football as well or something. So uh, he's big. Yeah. Those but, quads, yeah, the actual tree trunks for legs, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll like, I'll like go outside though, like just to go back to my point. Like, I'll see somebody that's like actually big, and I'm like, God damn, yeah. I'm so small. Like, I fucking hate this. Yeah, <laughs> like I hate someone this, like, bigger, no matter how big you, <laughs> think you are. I know, and I, I just try to like, I don't know. It's just like ultimately, I just want to feel good. I want to look good. I want to be healthy, and like, I, I don't care too much about being big because as soon as you live that way where you're seeing another guy and like i want to be bigger than him or like i want to you know like god damn it i'm just, i feel small like you're just you're never gonna feel big like there's always somebody bigger than you like you're just, you're just it's a repeated cycle so i just have to not focus you have on to that also so remember if you're even bigger than like half the people you're seeing i think you you have pretty good genetics because like i don't know even people who are on like steroids and stuff like they you're bigger than even some of those. Like some people can take steroids and they still won't even get, like if their genetics aren't good, they still won't even look that good when they're on steroids. So you, you might even look better than some, and they're getting way more common in this day and age is like reading and stuff. So I feel like, I don't know, if you're better than half the people you're seeing in your gym, then you're doing pretty well. I feel like you're probably better than some people who are even not natural. I don't know. Yeah, I've heard some crazy things about getting on gear. I mean, you, I, there was this like Jeff Nippard video that was just saying like the difference yeah, between him do. Yeah. being being fully natural and then taking steroids. And there was like some chart of like some guy oh, that took that steroids. Too, yeah. so, some guy that took steroids and didn't even work out. And he still yeah, it was gained, like three like, times the muscle growth. <laughs> or, like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, so oh, unfair. Fuck. Just like, play RuneScape and make games. But, but then you see all the downsides of gear and you see all the potential oh, yeah. like health consequences and all that. Like, dude, I'm not... I am not touching that shit ever in my life. Like, yeah. maybe in my 40s and 50s, I, if it's appropriate, I get on TRT and just like just yeah. for my own. Like, that would be for health, you know, and for sustainable like muscle. But like, there's That's no way the I'm I got back into myself up. Young, yeah. What were you saying? Part of the reason I got back into lifting and stuff again recently is like, I think I was like in the shower when I was like 27. I'm 28 now. I was like 27 in the shower. And I'm just, you know, when you have like those deep and meaningful thoughts in the shower, I'm like thinking to myself, shit, I'm getting old. Like I need to, I won't be able to reach my genetic peak if I don't start now. Like, it's like once you hit like, I think it's 35 is when your test just starts dropping every year by like a Mm. few grams or something. Yeah. It's like, I want to have my maximum potential and be like, if I don't start now, I'm not going to be able to witness the best I could have ever been. I need to, I don't know, I need to do this now. And then I don't know. I just, 
That's, That's what got me motivated. Yeah. I was yeah. in the shower having like those depressive thoughts. I don't know. Yeah. Just like, you know, time's running out. Like that's the worst thing about getting older is just like understanding like, oh, you're not going to be young forever. Like, in fact, you're already beyond some of your peaks that you, you know, could have already had. We still can peak in lifting, yeah. but we've only got a few more years. And that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, we're, we're in our peak. Like this, like when you're 28, like you, that is fucking awesome. I think that's Arnold's peak was 28. Exactly. 20. Wasn't it? I'm pretty sure probably 28 is this perfect age um and yeah you can even early 30s you're still good so yeah but I, I, like, like 30s 40 mm, oh you still can be pretty good actually but yeah once I, you get over 40 it's probably starting to drop a fair bit totally i i always wonder like do i like because I've, I've kind of been thinking lately especially especially like just early this year i'm like do i start going to the gym like do i start like actually like pumping like weight again because i haven't done that in forever and yeah, but I just need to find like I want something sustainable, and I worry about going to the gym and then it not being as sustainable as I would have hoped, and I don't go as often. And then because when you are big, like you were saying, like when you're big and then you lose that, like it's it's a hit to the ego, it's a hit to everything. It's just like fuck. Yeah, <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> like this is horrible. Yeah, I, it was depressing. Like to, <laughs> when I hadn't lifted all, and I went in and it looked like what what I did in this thumbnail, and then I tried to bench again, and it was like. I can't like the bars too heavy. No, it wasn't the bars too heavy, but like, yeah. oh my god, it's insane how much, how much strength. Like my strength probably halved. Like it's insane. Yeah. And all through high school, because I was that like gymnast guy. Like, whenever you just do arm wrestles for fun or whatever, mm-hmm. I never lost a single arm wrestle ever in all of high school to anyone. Wow. And then what the fuck? Yeah. And then when I got, I went on like a random like a uh, like a uni like a, a skiing trip. Mm-hmm. and there was some random dude while we were drunk and I arm wrestled him and then he beat me and then I just couldn't sleep that night I was just thinking about how dare I, how could I lose like it destroyed my ego like I was just thinking about it like three hours straight in bed <laughs> because like there was some girls watching too and if there's oh, girls no. watching and you lose it's like you know how it is yeah, it's, like, it's, like it's yeah. over for you dude if the girls weren't watching too it would have been better but they were watching I was like oh shit it's just my pride it's gone <laughs> Would you be like that? I don't know if you would. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, I think just, that's a guy I, thing. I, I mean, it is. But the thing is, like, I just, my whole life, it was never about getting big. It just, I, I didn't focus on that stuff for a variety of reasons. I never cared about that. I mean, one is just I didn't have any sort of, like, quote, unquote, mentor or anybody that, like, really got me motivated at a younger age to look good and lift weights and stuff. So I didn't even start really caring about how I look and stuff till senior year. And then, you know, I spent two years on a mission for the church I was associated with. And, like, you know, I didn't do fucking anything. Just like, just walked around and stuff, um, biked. But then getting back into college, I wanted to. But, like, I just never cared about these things super. So, yeah, I never had that big of an ego to begin with, you know, just in regards to that kind of stuff. So, but, yeah. yeah it sounded like you got pretty strong, though, if you were benching 120 kg or whatever, but two reps whatever you said yeah you no I, I worked out for a good a, 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 like a good couple semesters and just ate a ton i just would just i was walking everywhere oh, you know, was... campus is big i was just walking everywhere and then i'd go lift every single morning well not every morning but like four times a week and then i would just like and i'm young i'm like 21 and i would just go it's to mcdonald's insane. i would go to mcdonald's at like fucking midnight and eat like four mcdonald's i would do the same i just, would do exactly you're the just same. pounding and just eating beef and just lifting and just like it's so easy to just lift a lot if you wanted to yeah i remember being like i was probably the same age as you maybe 22 23 or something and i remember like post-workout i'll tell my friends all right we're getting a kebab now and then they'll be like i'm not doing that it's disgusting whatever i'm like and i'll just go alone to like the kebab no, that, that like post work. I already had like dinner and stuff yeah. and that as well. So I got so fat, but you yeah. get so strong so quick. You get so, so like, strong so quick. You need to deal with the consequences later if you're not doing enough cardio. But yeah, but then you still don't look good because you just your face looks like a blueberry. I, I know. know. I would blow it up <laughs> so bad. It just my like, fat just all goes to my face straight yeah, away. Yeah, my, my, me, me too. I get a fat face. Like if if I eat like because I would just order a fucking pizza at like two in the morning and just pound that shit wake up at 11 the next morning and i'm just like looking at myself in the mirror before i go to the gym i'm like bro i look like a look disgusting <laughs> like i look like a fucking sausage like, <laughs> like, oh. God, like and then you're like sweating and you're like smelling the pizza coming out of your pores like oh my god this is awful oh but, but you would lift so much you're just carb loaded to the 
like yeah, a yeah. The strength would feel ins- I remember <laughs> yeah. this was so this is so filthy of me to do. I should not have done this, but I remember <laughs> So I would be like doing my reps on whatever I did my working set at. Let's say like I did my working set at like 110 or something. Like yeah. that's what I did for like three times eight or whatever. My friends, they were just starting out at the gym. They'd be on like their max, one rep max. And I remember just grabbing their weight and throwing it in the air and like doing claps between with their weight just to like mock them for it. Wow. It was so it was so mean. That is, that's that's like kind of dangerous for yourself. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. It's so bad. Like that is... That's just, I don't know, that's yeah, so just rude. egotistical to the extreme. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was me at the time, just eating just ridiculous amounts, just super strong, just super ego. And then I feel like that's a thing that also diminishes with age is your ego as well. I feel like you just get, I don't know, you just realize that a lot of people are better than you at everything and you just, don't you reckon you get like more yeah, humbled just, with you age? just accept it. You just, yeah. Yeah. Like, I feel like I used to have a lot more of an ego when I was, like, 22, 23. Mm-hmm. And now, I don't know. I just don't think that I mean, I'm I, I mean, that I great hit, competitor. I hit my rock bottom at 23 where it was just, I decided to drop out of school, leave my religion, <laughs> move across the yeah. country, and start playing RuneScape to two people. Like, that that was <laughs> that was my, like, rock bottom. Like, I, if, I couldn't have an ego. There was no such thing. It's just, like, I am pathetic and all in the eyes of everybody that i knew and i would just i kind of like ghosted a lot of people because who the f- like you just you, you your you life's going with- your, your life's going so well to so many people you know in their heads and then you actually see what you've become and it's just like what the fuck dude like you're like, what are you doing with your life like you just like, you've lost your mind you've lost your way and yeah. especially in a religious context that was just like you, there's so many expectations with like yeah. who you're supposed to be in the religion I was in, so I I've never been like super religious. I yeah, I don't know. I went to like a Catholic school and stuff growing up, but mm-hmm. I never believed. So yeah, yeah. No, I, I was I, I was I really because I, I grew up. I don't know if you know what Mormonism is. Not really, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That 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 always surprises me, by the way, because like I just grew up and like you just think that this is like it's just like you believe it from the day you're born i mean you're just yeah. pounded it into your head from you know birth. so you don't believe it at all anymore sure. no or... i don't i um yeah it but i will say there's like obviously lingering effects because i still have the same brain i had growing up and like i i went my whole childhood into adulthood believing this and yeah. so and then i even served a, a like a two-year mission where you're just isolated like you're just in this thing for two years teaching about it and you know just being and now you look back at that, you're like, why did I do that? <laughs> well, it's, I, I, I don't actually regret it that much um, because I actually, I mean, I was able to learn Spanish, which was like, a, that was awesome because I had to teach people in Spanish. That is My Spanish cool, is yeah. very rusty at this point, but I can still read it. I can still like understand it relatively yeah. well, but speaking it, I'm really, really bad at it at this point because it's been like a decade. But um yeah, like uh, it was still fun, and I still met a lot of wonderful people, and had a great, like, great experience. I'm just, I was just outside all the time, and talking to random people, and it was still great fun. But yeah, when I think back, I'm like, oh, what was I actually doing? It's just kind of, <laughs> kind of like, you know, we did a lot of service, which was non-religious, but then the, just the lessons I'm teaching, I'm like, what am I, what am I teaching people exactly here? So I look back and kind of think like huh that was that was interesting because it's like your formative years like i was 18 to 20 so yeah you're 18 to 20 you're just for for two years straight without visiting home you know you're just two years straight you have a missionary companion with you it gets changed every you know six to 12 weeks you're living with them what permanently. You, yeah what what made you like like go out there change your view on it like what made you realize that this isn't real or like um it was just a lot of like just being well one of the problems i had and not everyone has the same like experiences with religion obviously everyone's brain functions a little bit differently i i feel like naturally i'm more of like an ideologue so I, i i kind of like want to make sense of the world like deeply i want there to be some sort of purpose and i think like growing up it's just when somebody tells me something is true at such a young age, I 
Oh, I humans are easily it. manipulated. That's yeah, and like, I, and like I, I want to believe it. Like my my parents are strong believers in it. All my leaders at church are believing it. They're claiming this is the truth. So I want to believe that obviously this is, and obviously it's going to provide you, like a, you know, this kind of goes both ways. But you, like you're offered purpose and comfort, so it's like okay, like uh, I know what's going to happen to me. Like I know exactly why I'm here on Earth. I know exactly where I'm going. I know exactly what's going to happen, and. But so deconstructing that was really painful, like really painful uh, for uh, like a couple of years, just like uh, thoughts at night, like, holy fuck, like this is, I thought I had, I thought I figured this whole life thing out and now it's just all crumbling and deconstructing my whole identity. And uh, it was just a lot of reading. It was like just being more open-minded with like what's going on. And I think a big reason I was able to do it, because it's, sometimes it's hard for people, even if they are having doubts on like certain things. They're so in, so entrenched and wrapped up in the culture of it that it's like leaving, it's just like, it's not even an option. It's like, why would you leave? Like, even if you didn't believe, like, why would you even leave? Because you're just going to throw away your community. You're going to throw away, you know, and this is more for like cult sort of religions, not just like basic, like, oh, I'm a Catholic or I'm a, I'm a Christian or whatever. It's like this, like the Mormon culture is like you stay Mormon. And if you don't, like you're kind of looked down upon basically. Yeah, and so for me, uh, you know, it's just just it's just a lot of reading and just a lot of like just and again when I hit my lowest of lows, not I I already abandoned everything, so it's just like it was easy to deconstruct, relatively easy to deconstruct at that point because I wasn't trying to impress anybody. Didn't have a family, didn't have any like it was just yeah it was just on just my got own. To see like a logical outlook on it all and be like yeah yeah it, it was it was fun too. Like it was fun in a way. It was it was it was a struggle. It was horrible in some aspects but ultimately it was like kind of liberating and just like oh wow i can actually just like think for myself yeah i think i so growing up i mean i got forced to go to like a, a catholic primary school or mm -hmm. whatever but i i would say i started thinking about it logically when i was probably like 10 11 years old or something like that like i'm thinking like oh, I don't believe in Santa anymore. I'm not going to believe in that anymore. Like, it's the same sort of thing. That's kind of like the way I saw it. But I was like, uh, like I was having slight doubts or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then there was some girl in our playground skipping. And then she just one day fell over just dead the next day. Holy fuck. And then all the teachers are just like, oh, it's it's okay. It was God's plan and stuff. I'm like, yeah, sure. It's definitely God's plan for some girl to die when she's 11 years old. That's definitely fair. Like, Holy and then I'm just shit. like, yeah, no, this is, this is, <laughs> yeah, no, this isn't okay. I'm not. I, I can't believe in that anymore. And then that's kind of like, that was the turning point for me. I feel like I was just like, wow. See know. that. Yeah. It, it's interesting that it worked out for you that way. Cause I feel like for some people it would have been so shocking and so like hard to accept what happened without there being. Oh yeah. That was a super messed up situation overall as well. But that definitely solidified like my doubts and um, the faith and stuff as well. Wow. I feel like. Wow. But that's the thing, like you, you're brought up with it. Like you can't really escape it until you think about it logically or exposed to something that would make you think this isn't real, right? Can't yeah, be. yeah. No, I mean, I, I know, I don't even think I really had a traumatic experience happen to me for me to go through that. It was, yeah, it was just like things just stopped making as much sense. Like when I hit twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, I'm like. I'm really starting to, this isn't adding up. Like a lot of these things that I was told <laughs> is just not adding up, but it was just so like built in my routine and everything to kind of follow this and just, yeah, yeah, it was, it was weird. It was weird times. Like going back, like I see it now and I can kind of see like what would the, again, like going back to what we said like earlier in this cast is like growing up older and just learning stuff and becoming more wise and just, understanding like i can see more from an from a like broader perspective of what i was dealing with back then but in the moment i mean you're just blinded like you just don't know what they are so confused like what's going on and i imagine in the next 10 years you know just the older i get i'm gonna look back at right now and i'm gonna think wow the way i thought it was so stupid yeah. was also that's so confined yeah and so i'm yeah thinking, yeah so that's, that's what excites me about getting older too yeah, you always think that you're, like, the smartest guy ever when you're in this, like, I don't know, once you're, like, mid-20s or whatever, you always think, yeah, I, I know it all by now. And then every year, you look back at your previous <laughs> self, and you're just like, I knew nothing. Like, that's, that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. every yeah. year. It's great. Like, I love it. Yeah. Like, it's actually exciting. 
Yeah, I think and you're like, and they're like, surely now I'm fully as you get older. Yeah. And I'm thinking like right now, twenty eight. Like surely, like I'm, I'm, I'm good now. But 29, 30, yeah, but 30 you're 30, not. Keep looking back. Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, also in regards to getting older, have you seen like I, I looked up online like when is when are you the happiest in life? Like what's the happiest age? I think I watched that on Vsauce recently. I think it's thirty six. No, no, no. Is it's it? it's fifty. Oh really? Yeah, it's fifty. I guess that's because you probably have a family by then. You're probably just the most wise. You don't really you carefree. You're not too yeah. You're not you're not dealing with coming health, soon. Yeah, guess. you're not dealing with health consequences and 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 what's interesting is so you know obviously anybody that's younger than fifty can't claim it's fifty. So you know whoever's younger just has to base it off of however old they've gotten to. But what's interesting about 50 is like when you hit, because you would just think, oh, well, it's just because they're 50. They're just going to say that's the best. But when you hit 60 and 70 and 80, they still say it's 50 on average. Oh, so, really? So that's the interesting thing. So like I, I actually believe that like 50 is probably your best age, which is kind of exciting because I'm 22 years away from that. Like that's that's a long way. That feels, feels good. Hey, you've got some good years left. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's exciting. But Hopefully after 50, unless... it's over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. We got some good years left and less some random bullshit. Just, it's, you know what's crazy? What? Just anything can happen. A plane could just fall out of the sky and I get know. you. A meteor could just come I and know. strike you at any point and you're gone and you just don't know. It's just it's it's wild. It's and, over. And, and there's people that, you know, just their heart gives out. I mean, it's rare, super rare, but yeah. like your heart just gives it's like That weird. is so messed up to think about. Like you think about that when you're in bed sometimes and you're like, thinking about your heartbeat you're like it's the only thing keeping me alive this just yeah. stops at any point that's just me going like, yeah. i hate when you actually like make that link it's just you it's, can't sleep you just, it's terrorizing oh. but it's also like the most liberating feeling in some aspects of just knowing like bro you are you did not create yourself like, you're just here experiencing something i don't know what the fuck is going on i don't know how i'm alive but oh it's when, insane when, how fragile life is like how yeah, easy it's, it's, it's fragile it's like but it makes you just value when you really understand like how precious your life is like it makes you just value things like just so much more yeah so, but I, the thing that sucks yeah. is no matter how much you value things you don't remember in the end what you valued anyway <laughs> that's what sucks but i mean i guess it's no but it's cool for the time being yeah yeah no like know. obviously when you're dead it's like it's it's all over but I mean, imagine, just like imagine the alternative. Imagine you're, you know, you're going to be here forever. Like that would be fucking terrorizing. Like knowing that you can't leave, like you, you can't end this experience. Like, yeah. No matter like, what you do. Like that, that sounds scary. Yeah. Or you like get buried and still have a consciousness and you're just in the dirt for all of eternity for trillions of years to pass. You just yeah. conscious. And that would, that is the worst. Oh, that, yeah. That's that'd, gonna... be, that'd be horrifying. Um, yeah, and just knowing like there there is an end to this experience, but that also I feel like it, like because if there wasn't an end, like if you didn't know you were gonna die, like would you get anything done? Like would you get anything like like what what motivation would you have to do anything? Just like, eh, like I'm just here forever, so just <laughs> like so what are you gonna I guess. do? Yeah, I, I feel like that's the only <laughs> way anything could get done is like the experience we have. Like that's the only way anything's happening. <laughs> Like Maybe. there has to be an end, there has to be an end point, or else. But then the it's the same going? argument. Like, oh, what's the point of me doing anything if I'm just gonna die eventually anyway? But it's, I don't know. I guess there's two ways of looking at it. I suppose. I don't know. I feel like that's the driver, though, for all experiences. Like knowing you're gonna like. I mean, obviously, evolution plays a part, but like just getting things done. I guess a lot of people want to like leave their mark and be remembered in some way for future generations, right? Like that's a lot of people's goals to like leave a mark. But the thing is, in the end, all marks that are left get eradicated when our sun supernovas because it's got a time around it anyway, right? So yeah, everything yeah. that, even if you pass down everything and you did the craziest things in your life, unless our species actually inhabits other planets, then everything you do is just screwed anyway right yeah it's kind of messed up to think about or or the the whole the whole thing is like like i don't i don't oh wait have you ever done psychedelics i haven't but i want to <laughs> oh bro that that's <laughs> wild wild experience is this the, yeah i've 
I don't know. I, I don't know what I'd be like on it, but I, I, I definitely want to try it. Would you recommend trying it at some stage? Or the, the thing is, it's, it has its dangers. It has its risks, um, especially if you're not like... Maybe, obviously it's hard to know before you've done it if you're one of those people that's prone to like psychosis or schizophrenia or anything because these things are so powerful and yeah like but i just remember because like, one of the things that's it hel- it's helped me with is just understanding i know fucking nothing like if if i ever kind of had and and of course when you come back to sober reality it's kind of just you're kind of in like this weird headspace of like was was i just that high like was i that delusional like what the hell just happened but do you get hung over from it as well do you feel bad the next day if you take no, i've i've had i've had some trips where i'll come down and i haven't tripped for almost a year at this point cuz i did have a really traumatic trip that you know I don't know if you know the yeah. whole. You probably I did hear briefly about. It. I don't know exactly yeah. what happened. It, it, was, it was bad. It was on stream or something? Maybe. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It was quite an experience. I won't go into it. I've I've gone into it on some other casts, uh, but like the so like some trips I would do, I'd come down and I would feel absolutely beautiful. Like I would just feel so grateful. I'd feel so loving. I'm feeling compassionate for everybody. Like it's just a, an amazing experience of just pure, just like you just love everything. You love life. You're so optimistic. You just you just have love for humanity and life. And yeah, I bet it can completely just change you and make you just feel better overall, just from just having a single trip. I've heard. Yeah, so no, a, a single. I mean, my one of the most beautiful trips I ever had. It was just like I am wrapped in arms galactic arms of just pure love and ecstasy i mean it's just like there's like like it's indescribable it's literally indescribable because it literally feels like uh, like a it's not even like a full embrace of god it's like it's it's like a sliver of it like you understand this isn't even the full extent but you're feeling like whatever this power is loves me no matter what i've ever done no matter like who doesn't matter like you've lost all sense of like kind of yourself and you're just in just pure fucking love. It's insane. Yeah. And when you feel that and you come back down, you're like, what the hell was that? Like what? Like how could you possibly feel that way? Like how, what, what, <laughs> what was that? You, you, you're making it sound very enticing. I'm, I'm needing this right now. But I will say <laughs> because it's like, it's like the yin and the yang. It's like life, you know, life can be so good, but it can be so bad and trips can be so good and be so bad because the last trip I had that had, had basically forced me to stop because it was just pure hell. I mean, it was like terror. I mean, pure terror. <laughs> I can't know what that's like, though, if I don't have a, like, I don't yeah. know. Oh, you know. you cannot know what it's like. When I was experiencing that, I'm like, okay, this is the darkest, most terrorizing thing I could possibly imagine. And I'm dealing with it right now, and it feels eternal. Like, this is horrible. So, when you have yeah. that experience, you are all of a sudden like, okay. And, uh, you know, like, now when I think of psychedelics, like, I, I respect them so immensely. I don't even want to touch them. For strong, like it's not like I'm against doing them ever again in my life, but it's like it really showed me. Okay, like I have opened something in my mind that I never want to go back to ever again. Like that was just horrible. Like there's the beauty of it, and then there's the, just the hell. <laughs> and I'm yeah. like, okay, I definitely like, would be careful. Would like to try it at some stage though, because I don't know. Because maybe I don't know. Maybe more often than not, it is a positive outcome. It sounds like that only the bad side. I don't know. It doesn't feel like that is a. I guess it's a bit it, of RNG. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> it's it's literally rolling RNG. It's just like yeah. it's, it's it's RNG. Because even my first trip ever was, I had a terrifying experience. But I had the I had a mixture. It was like beauty and terror, and it kind of balanced out nicely. Well, I, I don't know about nicely, but it's just it, it had both of its effects and some some trips like that. But if you if you go into it and cautiously and you have like a trip sitter and you have all these things and you just, you're doing it responsibly and preferably under like, I mean, I know it's, it's not uh, legal everywhere here in Oregon. It's actually decriminalized. You can actually get like psychedelic treatment um, with like a psychiatrist, like a professional that's going to guide yeah, you through I've heard, it. Like it actually cures like depression more than actual medication a lot of the time as well. I've heard, I don't know. If oh that's yeah. True. No, I mean, yeah. it's, it's like, dude, you come back from trips and you just want to change everything about yourself. Like that literally, like tripping, 
I guess initially, like the first thing was smoking weed. Like you, you would imagine like weed would just make you a lazy sack of shit. Like when I started actually chronically vaping weed, like daily, yeah. that is when I started actually caring about my health. And then when I started doing mushrooms, that's when I really started caring about my health. Yeah. Like before that, it was just, I was just a lazy degenerate that had no motivation to exercise or do anything or just like, I just didn't want to eat anything healthy. Just like, <laughs> and then you, no, you have an experience. All the drugs are good for you. Yeah. All the drugs people think are bad for you. They're all good for you. They're all changing your life. Yeah. Well, they, they have their negative effects as well, but it would be like taking like, you know, ibuprofen can be beneficial, but then, you know, take a whole pack. And you're going to die. You're, your gut's yeah. going to start bleeding, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you ever had like, uh, I don't know, like Adderall or like Ritalin or any like, I don't know, ADHD medications. If you were like studying at uni, I know a lot of people used those while they're studying. Yeah, I, I took um, one of my friends. I, I took a pill of Adderall one time. It's but... actually crazy, like how talkative you get and how like just everything is interesting to you when you're on yeah, that. It's yeah, yeah, it's wild. <laughs> that that's one of the like the the saddest parts of like living sober because i like i live sober now i don't drink and i don't smoke or do anything and it's yeah. like you oh, don't I, drink I, at I, all I, yeah no i don't i mean i'll if if i were to be social and somebody offered me a drink yeah. I would take it. like i'm not against drinking alcohol it's just i don't do anything social so i'm not gonna drink at home alone <laughs> that's what sucks it feels like you kind of have to in this day and age when you are in a social situation it's like you would seen as somewhat you're like not normal if you don't i don't know it's not like Depending you're not normal it's just you're gonna be around people that are having a great time and you're sitting yeah, there you're overthinking in you your can't... fucking head you're just like oh I'm, yeah. a, I'm a fucking loser these guys are being rambunctious i just want to leave like this isn't fun just yeah. not not a great time. I mean, so like in yeah, Vegas, like I, you be I, a kid again. I yeah, like I I drank in Vegas and like I hadn't drinking in forever and like just had a wonderful time at some parties. It was just yeah. great. Yeah, so, but well, yeah, that that's one of the downsides is you just everything's like it's the downsides and the upsides. Everything's like base level. Like you're just no highs, no lows, but no lows. I mean, that's the great thing. You don't have any lows. So you're just kind of like baseline chilling, which is kind of boring, but Abixi asked, <laughs> I already know what that's uh, going to Hi, be. question for CBET. Cardboard. <laughs> oh my God. What is that? It's, <laughs> it's the dumbest meme ever. It was just whenever we were bored. Me and my friend, like whenever on like some stupid grind on our Iron Man, would just we're just bored. Me and my friend would just ask, "Are you cardboard?" Instead of bored, and we thought that that was funny. I don't know why. We <laughs> thought that was funny, and then we just put a random number after. We're just like, "Are you cardboard?" No one. And then me and a Bixie, you would just every time we're in a chat together, we just type like cardboard a hundred or just a random number after. It's like an inside <laughs> meme. It's so stupid. <laughs> Oh my god! It awesome. makes it would make no sense if like you're not in on it. You'd be like, "What is this guy on about?" Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's that one. That's the best part about inside stuff. Just nobody knows what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. Um, what else we got? All right, Ivy asks, "What would it take to have you coach a player to successfully complete the Inferno?" I know by our player she means herself, and she wants some coaching done. I'm pretty sure she's uh. She's currently dating Tao, I'm pretty sure. So she wants to get her cape before Tao. So I did let her know that I definitely would gladly uh, coach her. Anything to see her get the Infernal Cape before Tao would be amazing. He spurned two Tebos on both these Iron Men in like less than 100 KC of team raids. So I, uh, it wouldn't take much. I would probably, I would gladly help out, to be fair. Yeah, that would be, yeah. that'd be helpful. I, I just, uh, I, I showed the, uh, the Twitter screen on the YouTube end, and I had to show the muted um, reply, which was Eviescape. And so people are going to be like, why the hell do you have Eviescape muted? It's because he's probably posted a fucking penis on Twitter at some point. <laughs> I mean, Skidler's perma muted. Like, he just, like, just post. He. Skidler will post a grown man's penis and balls on my Twitter timeline. You think I'm just going <laughs> to fucking. He? You think I'm just gonna keep that? Like, just like, oh, what the fuck? And I'm, I'm certain Eviescape has posted <laughs> something similar. So I just, when people are wondering like why I've muted certain friends, it's just, that's the reason. I'm not super active on Twitter. Like, I yeah, mean, you're if not. Something, like I super. If some super drama comes out, I'll come and check it out. I suppose. Like, I didn't even know about that whole latest situation that you've heard of that really messed up one about that other Australian. I didn't even know about that until like a week or two 
Light yeah, off. See, so that's like, the, what is that, going on? Yeah, that's the problem with not being on Twitter. Um, it that would be a situation with Defy you're talking about. Yeah, where if you weren't in the know. Like imagine you're not in the know, and then you're just you know having a playful speak, like, comment on on Twitch or something, and you just say like, "Oh yeah,", yeah and you speak like positively of it. Yeah, like, exactly. It's just like that. That shit's worrisome. So it's kind of good to be in the know, especially in the fucking. I still can't believe that's stuff. real. That is actually that is insane. Yeah, no, that was yeah. wild. I mean, it's not for sure real, but it seems pretty real. I think we can de- like decently say that there's a very high chance that it is real. I don't know. But. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's like uh, if I had to guess, I would say that it is factual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else um, we got? Okay, so let's see. Why Ace asks any good memories of holiday events back when you were younger playing? I remember spending hours, if not days, sometimes at Christmas or Halloween events. Yes, definitely. Actually, oh. I got I got some good stories about that. So I used to play with my sister growing up. We we'll both play in um, RS together as we first got into it together. I was probably, I don't know, maybe 14 and she was maybe 12 or something. And we we're both like gaming together, thinking about getting our first membership. I remember we're in Fiji, meant to be just enjoying our holiday. We're in a pool in Fiji and we're just discussing. She's just discussing, oh, I can't wait to get 75 wood cutting and chop those magic trees once I get members and stuff. And I'm just thinking, I've been looking at like, PK videos of people with obby maulers one attack. I'm like, I'm making obby mauler and stuff. And I just kept going on to my sister about how good my obby mauler is going to be. And we'd get home, have like our music max volume, do like those. I've still got like that Christmas turkey event. I don't know if you remember that, <laughs> the cornucopia and stuff like that. You get eek, that little spider and stuff. I remember doing like all those events in like drain oil. We'd do all the holiday events back in the day, me and my sister together. And, uh, yeah, she eventually grew out of it, and then I still was addicted, unfortunately. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's the worst. Like, Because all my yeah. siblings played RuneScape at some point, and I'm the only one that's still fucking playing. I'm like, geez, I, I need help. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, I think... Yeah, that's the... I mean, it was... How crazy was it when you first got your membership and you first got through those gates near, like, Tavoli and yes. you're, like, walking across the mountains? You fight, You see, like, people catching you're like oh this is where you can catch sharks and stuff after you make your way across i don't know oh. if you took the same route when you know always across that was always you... the only route i would take that's that yeah. is the route and then you would just keep heading in that direction as far as possible like you'd yeah. go past the gnome stronghold you'd see your first ever magic tree you'd be like holy shit that magic tree looks Dude, good i would I, I, would al- I would always stop off at sears village sears village bank See all yep. the Giga Chads there, and then oh, what the I maple do... trees. How good did yep. your first oh. maple trees be? Like, oh, oh, they were oh so cut cool. That. that whole place, like, and it's like I always had the music playing. So the song Overture, that's the one that is like playing in Sears Village. That song oh. gives me so much nostalgia because it's like that is peak, peak fucking nostalgia. It was just beautiful. And then I would continue the down that... the path down to Ardoin, and then you get the Baroque soundtrack there and thieving cakes. I was like, bro, I can just steal cakes like this is insanity <laughs> like this is insane members is amazing you would not believe what i used to call that city our dugney I, I used to call it argandone <laughs> argandone yeah i used to call it our dugney <laughs> oh my god yeah it was bad oh my god and you see your first person ever in ghostly robes and you and you realize like dt is like a crazy quest and like you want to do that so bad just the flex is crazy do you remember like how much you look up to people who had done dt do you remember that you you have to remember the time i played because i played 2004 to 2007 so i didn't know what the fuck items were oh that would have been even more prestigious back then then yeah i don't i don't even know when desert treasure came out when i don't know but the the thing that was so prestigious was seeing like abyssal whips and people with oh yeah like the gnome scarves and the fucking like i don't know santa hats and like that that's what i knew i was i was a dumbass like i was a a child so yeah i had a friend in high school who kept trying to convince me to get membership and i was like scared to ask like my parents to like pay for my membership so i remember i used to have to like sneak down to like the post office and buy like a fake like a fake visa card and like um use that for membership and then i'd like <laughs> shred it and like dispose of it to destroy the evidence and, stuff like that. and i remember oh the funniest thing my other friends he wanted membership but he couldn't get the cards so easily and you know how you could like pay by phone or whatever 
as well. Yeah, yeah, I heard about up. that. Mm-hmm. One of my friends, we're on Skype together from back in the day, and he rings and he pretends to be his own dad when he calls up. And they're like, oh nah, I'm God. not believing this. You don't sound old enough. And then my other friend with like a deeper voice like takes over and he's like, yeah, I'm his dad. And he's like, okay, that's fine. And then he actually got the membership <laughs> friend pretending to be his dad. That is awesome. <laughs> it was so good times. Oh, I just... No, we'll never get that back. It will never get it back. Nope. And I remember just being... Yeah, I remember my friend being like in my, my history class. He's like, dude, what are you doing? You need to get money. You have to hunt these red chin chompers. You got to train your hunting. And he pronounced hunting with a K on the end for some reason. He called hunting. <laughs> He's like, you got to train your hunting up. And I remember like going to like the red chin chomper spot, having my volume on max. Do you remember that? Like, do 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 do. Remember that music at like the red chin chomper <laughs> yeah. spot? Like sound. I mean, oh, I I would never remember it back then because I didn't even know what a red chin chomper was, but I can imagine. Oh, they look so nice as well. He just build. It's like one of the one stackable things you could like build up, and it was just so nice to look at. Don't you reckon? Just when you have a few hundred stacked on top, just See, building that, you get attached to like your stack of chins. Yeah, so now that uh, I never fell in love with chin champa hunting, which is really odd because most people have fond memories of that. I mean, I know Curtis MMORPG that was always his favorite, and he went for ninety nine hunter. Like a lot of people love hunter. I just I've always hated it, and chin champa hunting was never my go to, but. I think I liked it just because of the music and stuff. I think, mm. and it's just different. I know. It's such a it's such an interesting training method just because, like, yeah, endlessly stacking as well. Chinchampas feels great. I don't know if you also back in the day tried to like lure bots and like kill the bots and then take their stuff. Did you ever do that, dude? My brain wasn't developed. Do you think I even could develop <laughs> a strategy like that? Fucking a, no. You know what I used to do? There were these walls with like ivy on like near castle walls that you. It's like AFK. It's basically like redwoods. I don't know. Yeah, if you know, I know. I know about that enough. Yeah. Yeah, so I used to get because you could set up the toads from Chompy Bird Hunting there, and you know how they explode and do like one or two damage. So I'd like set up all the Chompy toads around the wood cutting bots. I remember getting like a Robin Hood hat and like a dragon axe and stuff from blowing up the frogs. Wow, that's giga brain! So... Holy shit! Yeah, and I had another, and there was also ones near the um black dragon in like tavoli dungeon like they would kill like the black demons but they were for some reason programmed to pick up black dragon hides mm. so i'd kill some of the black dragons and then you'd leave a trail like ooh piece of candy ooh piece of like you'd do that <laughs> for like all the way through like the deadly spiders <laughs> to the black dragon and it would be so funny just watching them pick each one up and they finally get to the dragon just throw, like bruise like a 46 on them and kills them that was so awesome satisfying. And See, you- that's when bots were just probably the worst thing ever just so basic. Dude. Oh, that was so fun though. Not, yeah, nothing can compare to those days, I swear. Just getting yeah. home from school, watching your Chris Archie top 10, watching your, what, Nightmare RH getting killed by Nightmare Crashes. RH, bro, 100%. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was Did you time. watch him back in the day? Yeah, <laughs> when I was really young. Yep. Like yeah. Probably 2007. Yeah. Um, Okay, Raya asks, can you explain the significance of the L sit? Oh, we can't. I don't think we can go into that. Yeah, we in, definitely can't because I already know where it's going. You, you but, know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you've, t- you've told me. But, like, <laughs> dude, like, the fact that you could do a three minute L sit, right? Yeah. How long can you do one for? Like, I've seen you do them on stream before. Like, an L sit. Well, the thing is, is like, are your legs like angled even above ninety degree? Like, are, are you like a? Oh, it would be at least ninety degree. Yeah, I'll, yeah. Because yeah, right. for me, like, I can hit ninety, but it just slowly over time is lowering. You know, it yeah, just, it starts. Yeah, it's, it's dropping, like and so, so you know, I I'll prob- still count it if it's like, if it's say, yeah, it's just a little bit below yeah, that like angle. I'll be like, I'll still count it. Yeah. Um, but for me, it's like. I could probably do a 40 second one if I was like fresh and trying to push, but, um, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, no, it's, but, it's I mean, respectable, but it's nothing like three minutes, three minutes. Just like Jesus Christ. Yeah. When that situation occurred, it was kind of like, I just wanted to prove my coach wrong. Like it was like, Oh, I'll hold this for a minute. And I was like, I can do more than that. And I just kept going. Just went to three that's minutes. Wild. So, yeah. That's wild. <laughs> yeah. Elsons are but great. I don't think I could, I wish I could expand on that, but definitely can't. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely not. YouTube definitely don't. Point. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else we got? Let's see. Okay, is this appropriate? Or do you have to tell me? Um, please get Seba to tell you the boomerang shower story. 
Oh, that is definitely that's worse than the Elsa okay, one. We'll just, we'll just we'll just skip over that. I'll just tell you that some other time. Okay, that yeah, sounds <laughs> good. Sounds good. Outside the cast, yeah. Um, what is more challenging, No Pillar Inferno or Blood Torva? Ooh. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would take longer to develop the skills to be able to do a No Pillar for sure. Right? Way a, more. Yeah, it's, I think it's, anyone with like good pvm understanding if they really like threw themselves into the deep i feel like they would get blood torva if they played like all day you'd probably get it right if you like played like yeah. 12 no, hours the thing is with no pillar inferno is like it looks so insanely complex and then you actually just f figure out the theory behind it figure out what you're supposed to do in certain situations and if you had absolute max gear and stuff like if you can do the inferno fine I'm imagining, I've never done a No Pillar Inferno, but I imagine just over the course of a few days, you could probably get good enough to just get through the waves. And especially with the gear we have today. It's not like you're trying to do it with, you're not trying to speed run it. You're just trying to, just you know, so you can wear tanky gear. And But yeah, no, I would still say No Pillar is more challenging, but I wouldn't say it's like on a completely <laughs> different level. Yeah, the thing about No Pillar is... Um... No pillar is basically pillar because every NPC is a pillar. If yeah. you just look at every NPC as being a pillar, then it's the same anyway, right? It's just a matter of off ticking it on spawn. And if you know how to do two tick, that two tick is the strongest thing you can ever do in Inferno. If you know how to two tick, that just makes no pillar, pure capes, Zerka capes, anything like that. It makes it so easy. And if, I, I mean, you need to know how to do one tick too in case like you can't set up a two tick in a yeah. no pillar. But if you know how to do those two things, one tick and two tick flick with blobs, um, so long as you don't have a blob in the off cycle in a two tick on spawn, I mean, you can just kill it and respawn it, then it always respawns in two tick anyway. It's just annoying if you can't get to a blob and you have two tick apart with a blob off tick. That's the only annoying situation of a no pillar. Besides that, I don't think it's that hard once you know all the fundamentals. But I feel like it takes a long time to get super comfortable with all those mechanics. That's why I'm going to definitely rate it higher than the blood door i feel like it to yeah, do a no would, pillar and feel comfortable so. doing it that would at least take even for a good player i feel like it would take them like a few weeks to feel mega comfortable doing it but blood tour you could with a good player you get that in a day i feel like i don't know yeah i don't yeah yeah i don't think blood tour is yeah it's hard but at least you can like go in and out and the fights are only like a few minutes exactly like, that's that's that the biggest idea. factor is just they're several minutes long and that's it yeah. um Okay, so kind of actually on that Inferno topic, Faye Poppy asks, can you explain the difference between the North and South Pillar in Inferno? How do I quote the, the clip from EVScape? I don't know if you've... Have you seen the clip? I probably have if it was popular. Oh my God, someone's got it available somewhere. I need to show you the clip again. So it's basically me. I don't know how I can quote it exactly, but I, I basically said... The way I worded it was like really difficult and sounded like mega complex to understand. But what I was saying in the clip when I was teaching, you know, when people are like south of a south pillar, how they like freak out because they don't like mechanically know how it works. Like compared, like they've learned everything off the north pillar and like how to off tick stuff. Mm, yeah. Running out from. Well, if you think about the south pillar, if you're north of the south pillar, that's the same as being north of the north pillar. It's yep. the same like blocks of thing taking up that space right like it's the same thing and if you're south of the south pillar that's the same as being south of the north pillar it doesn't yep. matter everything's still the same it's just relative to where you are relative to that pillar so all i was saying is the north pillar is a south pillar but south but i said it like really weird in the clip and the clip just sounds really funny because it just sounds just <laughs> like a mental <laughs> i don't know if you if you watched it after i said that it would make complete sense but if you watched it out of context you'd be like well, this guy's crazy i don't know <laughs> You need to rewatch the clip at some stage. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Well, it's because most of the time, I mean, when you're speed running, you're everywhere in the Inferno. You're running everywhere. But for most Inferno people, they are permanently north of the North Pillar. It's just where they permanently camp. Oh, you're just in the middle of so, the arena, basically, yeah? Yeah, so most people, are ne no, most people are never just south of the North Pillar. That's just not a thing. You're not standing yeah. over there. So, Okay. Yeah. Um, does he have a good recipe for spaghetti bolognese? <laughs> do I have a good... I haven't cooked that in a long time. I actually do know... I mean, I actually have learned how to make it 
at some stage, like vegetarian spaghetti bolognese, but I haven't made it in years, so I don't know if I still would be able to. It's chopping up like some walnuts and I think it was like chickpeas and stuff in it, but that's fu- just the sauce. You, you yeah. like that's funny how like you literally mentioned that you're vegetarian and we like d- just completely glanced over that at the beginning. Yeah. But when where did how did that come to be? Have you always kind of been vegetarian uh, or what happened? No, nah, I wasn't until I was like probably 18 or 19 and then my sister got into it and I was kind of making fun of her for it like oh why would you be veg-? you know like everyone's like very hostile towards mm-hmm. other vegans or vegetarians or whatever yeah and then I I don't know like I looked like I'm not super about it for ethic ethic reasons or whatever I'm more mm. about it for the health benefits that's why I'm a bit of a naughty one like I'll still have some barbecue prawns or whatever if that's available like I can't resist that yeah it's too good can't resist some shrimp on the barbie so um, I don't know. I just looked at the health a- aspects of it. I was like 19 at the time. Um, all of my, like my parents, they both like were convinced by my sister that it's the correct health choice and they decided to do it too. And then they're like, well, unless you want to cook for yourself, then you have to be vegetarian too. I was like, screw that. I'm not cooking for myself. Oh, no <laughs> damn. Went, <laughs> yeah. And then I went vegetarian. I was like, oh, this isn't even that bad. And then, yeah. I just Ve- vegetarian's it, pretty chill, especially compared to vegan, especially like pure vegan. Oh, yeah. You still like, get eggs and cheese and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, my, eggs my, and bread with baked beans and avocado. It's awesome. My go to. Yeah. My, my sister and brother in law are vegan and their daughter. And uh, it's pretty intense. I mean, it's just like. You don't realize how many things are non-vegan that seems like they would be vegan just because of like some ingredient, random listed ingredient in the ingredients. Yeah. Like I don't want to be that guy when you're out in a restaurant. It's like, oh, is there butter in this? Is there this and that? Because I don't know. I think people are going to... This is the thing as well. You know how, I don't know, like the meat industry has done like such a good job at like marketing protein and it being like super manly to like eat mass amounts of protein or whatever. And you're yeah. seen as like, more feminine if you don't consume all meaty stuff yep that's the thing like you're not viewed as like you're viewed as a bit of a girl if you if you say that you're a vegetarian as a guy like it's definitely a more negative thing socially to come out as that's why i don't like interesting often say it as well yeah Yeah. i feel like i i because like i've always just been able to just eat whatever and yeah that's yeah those are things that it's like yeah that is kind of interesting now that you say that it is kind of the perception that's given but i will say i am I, i'll be naughty like if i'm at like a party and like mm-hmm. there's no vegetarian options i'll still just eat it anyway like i don't, I don't like i'm not super fussy it's just because it's mainly for health reasons i'll just 98 99 percent of the time like if if there is another option i'll have the other option that is vegetarian but if not then i'm not super fussy yeah. about it sort and, of and i think if like because I, I i've kind of wondered my own like uh this is more on like the morals of it, like veganism and like, okay, like I can actually, I, I can actually kind of understand this like pretty well at this point. Um, why it would be ethical to be a vegan. Uh, the thing is it just goes so extreme to the point where, you know, it, it ends up kind of becoming like, it's impossible to be a vegan perfectly, obviously, because there's just too many, too many factors yeah. and so many you'll things. Step, you'll step on an ant. Yeah. And, and so, <laughs> And so it's just like one of those things where I think the biggest thing is just b- being horrified by factory farming and just the yeah it is living it is pretty messed up of to animals. be fair yeah, yeah. So, so that shit's really fucked up um, but yeah I would never like if, if I became a vegan like if somebody made me something like I wouldn't I wouldn't be against like I wouldn't be like oh my god what the fuck is wrong with you I'm gonna throw this away like it's like it's already it's already prepared yeah, like it's already there that's like, just that's, like, that's exactly how i am like yeah. if it's even if it's not vegetarian if they've pre-made it for me and it's there and it's going to go to waste anyway then i'll eat it yeah it's, yeah that's how yeah. that's how i would feel so it's kind of it's an it's logical a, right yeah it's, an, think, it's, a, it's a very interesting sort of topic because it's just yeah it's pretty complex but yeah ultimately that would be the reason i'd become a vegan is just to try to take a stand against this the brutality of when you if you recognize animals as, you know, being able to suffer and stuff, like, holy fuck, that's got to be the most dark existence yeah. of all time. So. Yeah. That, yeah, I don't know. It sucks yeah. if uh, reincarnation just happens to be true and then we just come back as one of those and, oh, that, yeah. I Bro, don't know. could you imagine just, <laughs> fuck, 
that would be horrible. It's like when you hear, like when you actually hear about that stuff, like it's so easy to just, especially as an American, just block it out of your mind. Just don't even see, don't even see the poultry section as like that was an animal at one point. But like when yeah, you hear. Yeah, that's like people watching chicken run and they're cheering for like the chicken to escape from the humans and they're eating fried chicken while yeah. they're cheering for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't make Literally. the connection, do they? Yeah. But you just see those, those horrible environments where pigs are just in a cage and they can't even move. You just can't move yeah. your whole existence. You just oh, get yeah. fattened up and then you slaughter just living in your own shit forever. Like, oh my God, that would be. And you don't know any different. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Hell. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Okay. So we uh, l- let me, l- let's kind of like wrap things up. I'm going to ask you for some shout outs in a second, but I want to, we didn't really touch fully on the whole Venator bow fascination. So, ABP says, don't forget he's the undisputed ambassador of the Venator Bow Inferno Tech. Question to him, what inspired you to start testing it and how far do you think it has come from release till now at the Inferno? Well, no one really truly believes that it is that great in the Inferno. The only people that I've been able to really convince is Addy kind of sees a use in it, but he won't bring it over other weapons because he thinks that... I mean, he thinks that it still is time save, but he won't bring it over something like T-Plate or an extra Divine because that's more use cases over the entire run or mm. stuff like that. But the people that I've truly managed to convince it's good is like No Monkey. I don't know if you've watched No Monkey do runs, but he's he refuses to not use it, basically. Wow. But if you look at it, this is the way... You have to look at it. So it's 60 more total accuracy than a blowpipe, right? Mm-hmm. In four ticks, it can hit 96 damage if it triple bounces in four ticks. Blowpipe has a max of 35, so you can only do 70 damage in four ticks and 60 less accuracy. So if you ever get a triple bounce, that's basically three pipe shots the time you're doing two, each with 60 more accuracy, which is a lot, all right? Like, that's not negligible. Like I feel like that is... The only issue is it's quite difficult to set up sometimes i feel like because you have to like take bats and get drained the whole time you're doing it and there's very few situations that it's it's kind of rng if you get the spawns that even allow you to do it and even if you do get spawns that allow you to do it you kind of have to if you get like good dps onto the monsters before you're even able to set it up then the setup's gone as well so yep I don't know. I feel like later on into the wave when monsters, there's a lot of downtime, you're like bowing mages. It's a lot easier to manipulate stuff into certain positions where you can use it more effectively. But um, yeah, I don't know. I still, I still, I like it. But the recent plugin that's come out, I don't know if you've seen the one that makes them like insta disappear on the XP drop that's come out recently. It's like Tazar HP. Yeah, I've seen, there's a lot of plug. It looks, I mean, initially, I think I saw it from Scotty, like they were disappearing initially. And now there's like a thing where like, it even shows the highlighted tile becoming red if it's about to die. That's amazing. That that plugin is so good and it's too good to not use, but it thinks that when you target like a ranger with Venator Burr, if it hits like the Mm. ranger, then the bat, then back onto the ranger, it thinks that all the XP was onto the ranger Ah, and then it will disappear the ranger. You can't click it at all. Ooh, Yeah, so you can't even use it with that plugin. Okay, yeah, that is not good. Yeah, so people have been disappointed that I haven't been bringing it in for my streams, but that's you the reason. Can't, you, just, yeah. you can't, yeah. It's sad. I think, I mean, it's. De- I think it's worth the slot if you know how to use it. It's pretty complicated. I don't know if you've, do you fully understand how it works? I don't know if you. Yeah, yeah. I, um, for, I mean, for the most part, like just in regards to like monster sizes and stuff, it just gets a little bit complex. Have you seen these charts before? Let me see them. This is uh, Hisoka went into the Inferno with a dragon spear and he dragon speared all the mini blobs under every size of NPC and worked out everywhere that would cause a triple bounce with every size of NPC and he wrote these charts up. It was really funny watching his stream just trying to... Because you know how D spear is not like guaranteed to push it the correct way and you'd have to like just do it so many times and try to get them. He actually went through a fair bit of effort to get that worked out, but yeah. Damn. Yeah, this is fascinating. I didn't... I'd... I just knew the basics of it, but okay. But they really need to. The ch- it checks north and um, north and east three tiles for to check if the monster is in like its key tiles in range three tiles north or east. But then it only checks south and west two tile distance. So it's really hard sometimes with bigger NPCs to get a triple bounce. 
But I feel like if they just made it three three by three all around, then that would make it a much better weapon. It's, I don't know why they haven't done this. Yeah, like this no, there, of, like, there's so many ways to make it just so much more useful and like convenient. So I, that would be a nice change. It, yeah, I it, still am a believer, but it's. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I really, I, I had really, and this would obviously be subject to balancing the damage output, but like, I always wish the Venator bow was three tick. It would just be so much more like. Oh, yeah. Like so the, what was the bow use. that I used for that time that was decent? I posted a tweet of some time that I got with some, oh, the Zarite bow before Zarite crossbow came out. Yeah. That thing was so fun to use. That was fucking That thing awesome. was ridiculously good though. That was crazy. Oh. Now that thing, that thing was almost like too crazy like it just felt like i love the sound it made too yeah i mean i mean because you could just shoot a melee and then it would hit the other melee adjacent to it yeah that that's not the case with vendor but you couldn't do that right uh no yeah you can't do two melees together. yeah exactly but with the venator or yeah with the zarite bow originally like you just fucking shoot anything it's just hidden everything <laughs> everywhere it just goes crazy and it was three ticks but, it's insanity but to be fair it is a rare drop what well, was going to be a rare drop from next? Look how strong Zara crossbow is. So yeah, it's not yep. that I think it should be better than blowfire, right? It comes from next. It's a yeah. rare drop. Like it should be better. Yeah, I don't know. Been, it would, would have been really cool to see. Maybe it shouldn't have been that strong. That was a bit ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, but it, it's just it, it would be fun to use. Like it's just like kind of nerf its damage output. But I think the three tick aspect of it was exciting. The four ticks just too yeah just feels sluggish. But if you think about it, like it is. Even though it is four tick, it feels like it's a waste of time. But it, it, like, if you look at the numbers, like I said, like seventy total damage with a pipe maximum compared to ninety six and all that extra accuracy, like it is the numbers say that it is quite a bit better. But it's well, it's just it's a little bit different than that too because you're ha you're having to get three rolls at max to get ninety six, or two rolls to get yeah, seventy. Sure. is a lot more common. That's true. It's like a scythe max hit. I haven't seen a fucking scythe. Have you been using my scythe yeah. repeatedly? It's like getting a full like scythe max to roll hit max is insanity. Scythe, but but it's very high chance to roll like an average, like a decent hit. Yeah, which is yep, yep. good. It's consistent with finishing off low HP targets, but not consistent going for maxes. Yeah, feel that. Yeah. Okay, Seabet. This has honestly been one of my favorite conversations in a minute. Um, so I'm definitely gonna want to get you back on the cast, and we might even do some like sort of trio cast in the future. So we're gonna wrap things up tonight though, because this is getting late. And I want to ask you for three shout outs from the community. Three entire shout outs. Yeah. Oh, all right. I'm going to have to think about this. Well, I don't know. Okay. Well, I'll tell you my favorite streamer still. It's got to be. I mean, he's already doing quite well for himself, but I think he's one of your favorites too. We got to give Rasterman another shout out. I think he's my favorite. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be biased towards Inferno content, right? Because that's my thing. No, straight but up. Give... Great stream. Great vibe. So, Scotty. Scotty's yeah. the Twitch name. Yeah. Um, I would also give Stooge a shout out. I think he needs more. I don't know. I think he deserves more love than what he gets. He's crazy good at the game. He just needs to learn how to flick triple jads and uh, not tank uh, Zuck hits on Zuck. <laughs> and then he'll probably have world records soon. And... Like... <sighs> I would want to give a shout out to to Hemis if he still streamed, but he doesn't. So I'm gonna have to give the third shout out to someone else. He definitely was my go to back in the mm -hmm. day. I wish he he was just I don't know. He doesn't realize how like he felt pressured to be doing like super entertaining. Like I know how it is because I stream too, yeah. and I know it yeah. feels bad if you're not doing something that you think the viewers are enjoying. Yeah, but you don't but need to. I think he was super entertaining even when he was just doing boring content. So it'd be good to see him back. I'm going to give a shout out to Unluckers as well. I don't know if you've seen Unluckers' recent rise. He just recently got partnered. Mm. He's a super nice dude, Australian, probably one of the best toppers in Australia. Super kind dude, super good at the game. I definitely think that he would also be worthy of a shout out. Yeah. So, third one will go to Unluckers, I reckon. Definitely check him out. Hell yeah. See you bet. Uh, this, yep. this was awesome, as I said earlier. And for those listening still down in the description, we're going to have CBET's Twitch and Twitter. Do you have a YouTube, by the way? I, yeah, I did recently make one. It's not very active. I think I've uploaded like two things so far. Well, I'll have and that, I'll have that included as well. well. So you guys can all go subscribe and, yep. uh, 
yeah, Seabet, this was this was fucking awesome. This was fun, and uh, yeah. I, I I hope the the listeners had a had a good time. I had a great great night. This was fucking yeah. awesome. This is how long has it been? I swear it's been like it's been like four hours. Almost, almost, close to almost, it. Yeah, almost four hours. After the break, oh. probably probably just just over three and a half. I would say, but yeah, yeah, damn, yeah. So. All right. uh, uh thanks everyone for listening so go follow cbet also if you guys want to support the cast there's a patreon link and a youtube membership link you guys can go uh support and yeah next week we are having daisy fletchy on the cast i'm pretty excited about that that'll be fun to talk to her she's a pet hunter and um yeah so look forward to that and i will catch you guys in the next one peace